Good morning. I'm Alderwoman Sharon Tyus of the First Ward, and I am the chair of Streets, Traffic, and Refuse Committee. Today is uh, February 6th at about 10, 10 a.m., and the Streets, Traffic, and Refuse Committee of the Board of Aldermen is called to order. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Vaccaro? Present. Alderwoman Howard? Present. Alderwoman Boyd? Aye. Alderman, I'm sorry, what? Alderman Gosley? Present. Alderman Evans? Present. Alderman Schweitzer? Present. Alderman Peel? Present. Chair Tyus? Present. I was trying to indicate to the Alderman from the 27th, it's a present. We're, oh, we're present. Doing... <laughs> I'm sorry. Alderman, Bo uh, Alderman Bosley? We have seven present, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, first of all, um, I wanted to let you know that there are a few people who have some board bills that still need some work. So we will be, uh, when we get the board bills through that we need to get through, we will then be uh, uh, recessing to um, Wednesday at 10 a.m. to complete the work. I actually need something from the city that they I don't have, and I don't see anybody here from the city of, regarding the board bill that they asked me to sponsor. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is do an, uh, uh, entertain a, a motion to approve the minutes of Wednesday, January 11th, 2023. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second, Madam Clerk, if you would please call the roll. Alderman Vicaro. Aye. Alderwoman Howard. Aye. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Alderwoman Evans. Aye. Alderwoman Schweitzer? Aye. Alderwoman Peel? Aye. Chair Tyus? Aye. Alderman Bosley? We have seven aye votes. Okay. By your vote, you sustain the motion and the minutes from January 11th, 2023 is passed. So I, I usually do the board bills of the people not on the committee first so that they can go about their business since we have to be here to the end. Um, let's see, Alderman James Page uh, indicated to me he wasn't quite ready for his bill, so he may hear it Wednesday. Alderman Davis is not here. I'm on the committee, so those board bills go to the end. Alderman Peel is on the committee. Alderman Lisa Middlebrook of Board Bill 153, um, we actually combined that with another bill because it was supposed to be in committee uh, a few weeks ago and it didn't show up. Okay, Alderwoman Davis is not here, Davis. So Alderman Oldenburg, uh, item number eight, you're up first. Alderman Oldenburg. I see his picture not there, but I see his picture. He must be. He probably think he thought he was gonna take longer than he did. So we're going to go to Alderwoman Spencer is here. So you get to be first instead of last. <laughs> As a person with a last name. You're muted, Alderwoman. Whoever's muted, muting me, I'm the chair. Don't do that again, please. Um, I was just saying S and T's are always last. So it's good for the S to be first. So you can go first since no, no one else is here prepared to uh, to present their bill. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would uh, read the uh, introduction to Board Bill 187, please. Or Bill Number 187, introduced by Alderwoman Kara Spencer, pursuant to Ordinance Number 70333, as amended by, the, by Ordinance Number 71394, an ordinance directing the Director of Streets to install speed humps to calm the flow of traffic on the 3800 block of Virginia Avenue. 2600 block of Winnebago Street, 3100 block of Osceola Street, 3500 block of Iowa, 3600 block of Iowa Avenue, and 2800 block of Miami, 20, I'm sorry, 3900 block of South Compton Avenue, 2600 block of Osage Street, 3700 block of California, 3500 block of Michigan Avenue, 3500 block of Nebraska, and the 4,000 block of California Avenue between the intersections of California Avenue and Osage Street. 
and California Avenue and Gasconade Street, and the 3900 block of South Compton Avenue between the intersections of South Compton Avenue and Osage Street and South Compton Avenue and Keokut Street. Thank you, Ma Madam Chair. Would you like me to speak to it? I shouldn't have. Um, you are recognized to present Board Bill 187 to the committee, Alderwoman. Thank you, Madam Chair, um, members of the Streets Committee. Um, board Bill 187, as described by the clerk, is just a speed hump bill. Um, you know, I really tried to take um, input from members of the community um, on where the speed humps in the 20th Ward should be. Uh, and these were requested by residents. Um, of course, um, if it were up to me, I think I'd put a speed hump on every single um, uh, street. In fact, that's something I requested of the street director to price that out. Um, unfortunately, I never received a response from numerous emails requesting that of the streets department, which was disappointing. I'm hoping that by passage of this bill, we can at least get some of the speed humps um, that are requested in our community to slow the, slow the speed of traffic um, up and going in the 20th ward. I'm very pleased um, that uh, we, we can get this done before the end of session. I'm hoping. Okay, I want to just speak to that. I'm very disappointed also when I hear you say that you somebody didn't get back to you. I don't care if I like people or don't like them. I do believe that if you are uh, at a director capacity, you ought to return people's calls. And um, they're not here, but they will be here Wednesday. Um, and I every time I speak to her, I talk to her about that. Um, so I think that's disappointing. That's why I, in, I wrote the ordinance for this specific thing is because uh, I believe that speed humps were being a political foy for people. You know, some people got them, some people didn't. They told us certain rules for some. Then they came up with this $750 for a study, <laughs> um, which we did not need at all. Uh, it was all, all a ploy. Now they're trying to make us pay extra money for... Um, to put this, uh, they said the striping, um, ge some kind of geothermal striping, which I'm also gonna amend my bill um, to say when I come back here that we don't have to pay for that. Once we attach speed humps, that should be the, the uh, cost of the city. And I also wanna say the reason why we are having to do speed humps is because we don't have enough policing in our community. So we don't have a traffic division. So we are having to reach into our funds that should be used for something else to try to protect our citizens, okay, which is a, a, a enormous cost. I will tell you that I have them almost on all my residential streets now. It really does work. Um, I was a, a early supporter of it. And so in each neighborhood, there's only three or four streets that I don't have speed humps on the residential streets. And it is cut back. Uh, this summer, this is the first time we didn't have people who called me about their car doors getting hit or their mirrors getting knocked off or ch children running out and almost getting hit or seniors not being able to get out. So it is an effective tool, um, but it's a costly one. And so we shouldn't be adding any kind of added cost. The city should absorb this. They never used to do this before. I was here when we first got the war capital money in 1994. And before that, the city paid for everything. And now every time you look at it, they're adding something on. Well, the alderman is supposed to pay for this. No, we are not. Um, as a landlord, when a tenant attaches something to my property like a fan, it becomes my responsibility to uh, take care of that fan. And it's the same thing with the city. That you're having to uh, subsidize public safety with speed humps is a great thing for you, all the woman, as a leader. But it speaks to the city um, that we haven't been able to increase our police force. I... I Madam Chair, I agree entirely. I want to first say that, you know, I mean... I do hope that I'm grateful that you're bringing the street director on Wednesday. I really would like to outline a process for communication moving forward. It's really, it is totally impossible for us to do our jobs, especially if our jobs are to allocate funding um, to these departments uh, for things like speed humps. If we can't um, have um, some level of um, communication with the department heads. And it isn't just this one issue. I mean, I have really um, reached out on several occasions on several issues, speeding and um, unsafe, you know, lack of safety in our communities is a really top priority. And, and, you know, um, you know even, even as far as like, you know, the, the traffic lights and things like that, we really should be able to communicate directly with our department heads. And, it, and when there's a failure to respond on numerous ongoing uh, regular basis, it, it really does strap our ability to do and to do the work we need to do for our citizens when the city is failing on a broader sense 
to address issues, um, which is really the experience I've I've had um, in, in the last you know, you know for some time now. So, thank you for bringing that. Um, um, I'll also say that I do uh, agree that these um, these uh, investments should be done on a citywide basis. I think ward capital, um, the small amount, um, even though it's a quarter million dollars per ward currently, it's, it is very, very, very small. These should be used for um, add, additive, um, um, I think, investments, and we really should have a citywide a uh, pot of money for paving and for speed humps and for sidewalks and that sort of thing that should be done for all residents um, in an equitable fashion across the city. And that we don't have that as, as real disservice to our citizens and leaving it up to the individual ward alder people to try to figure out how to pave something as large as Jefferson is really a no-win situation and it allows for the finger to be pointed at us um, in an un, uh, unfair way, one of which we would have no hope to pay for even if we allocated all of our ward capital to those things, those infrastructure needs. It's a real lose-lose situation um, and one that allows us to be the fall people, those that are closest to the residents and it really, um, it at the end of the day, uh, results in a lack of um, investment in our communities, which is the real crime here. I agree. I go on further to say I've been trying to get some uh, curbing now since two, when I came back in 2013. I have a million dollars sitting up there waiting for curbing in various parts of my uh, ward that have not been done. Um, and then they called the press and, uh, and they'd be in the mayor's office and said, oh, Sharon Todd's just sitting on this money. I always follow up with emails and things. They don't know who I am. So pretty easy. I was able to show the press how long I've been trying to get these things. Uh, the mayor's office also put out that I was holding up uh, the budget that I'm now sponsoring. Um, pretty easy. Todd Flakes came and said, well, you couldn't have done two years because I didn't do uh, uh, one year. And they continue uh, shopping it to the press. So I finally had to tell the press something that I think is really funny. No alderman can stop the mayor from introducing a bill. The mayor herself can introduce a bill. So when you say out to the press that an alderman is keeping you from introducing a bill, either you are very uninformed or you're just lying, okay? Nope, I never promised them I was going to introduce this bill that I'm now carrying. I, the re, when, when they sent it to me, I then called the street director who does not return calls, and I continue to say that, and... Um, when she didn't return my call, I then called her secretary, Mary, who I've dealt with with 30 years. She finally admitted that I had called Mary. And so my whole thing that I have is that um, when you don't know what you're doing in your job, it is not a good thing to try to blame other people. It is a thing to admit that I am I, I'm failed at something. I'm sorry. I'm going to do better. It's also not a good thing to try to play um, to try to blame the alderman for things not getting done because we absolutely do not control the money. Once we allocate it, it's allocated. They can then just sit there for as long as they want to and not do your things. Um, when I first came here, uh, came back in 13, I sat next to Alderman Cohen and he was sitting and going on and on about some trees that he had tried to get done for several years. And I didn't understand it because when I left here, we usually got our stuff done we would turn it in. And if it didn't get done that year, the next year it would get done. The hardest thing was to get uh, street paving done because we, I'm sorry, 50-50 sidewalk because we only had one company. And we changed the rules so that we could have a couple of contracts. Um, it ended up the same company ended up several years later getting the same contract for all three or all two. But we did try to address it. But what I want the public to know, absolutely, the aldermen do. Once you allocate funds, be it ARPA funds or whatever, it is not up to us to be able to get it done. We do the allocations from our war capital, but then it goes to either the street department or it goes to BPS to be contracted out. And it's depending on who, who is in favor with uh, the uh, administration as if your things get done. And what is wrong with that is, that that is a wrong way to do things because they can be vindictive. They can uh, go out to the press and have these press releases. Long, long term, it is not in the best interest of the community. I don't care if you go out to the press and try to lie on me because the press, I've dealt with them longer than you have. And so I can just, the press knows if I'm holding something up, I'll say I'm holding it up and what are you going to do about it? Yes, I'm opposed to it. But I also keep a running track of how many times I try to reach that person, email them, 
call them. And um, a few uh, meetings ago, maybe on the 7th or the 14th of December, we had other alder people come in. Uh, the alderman from the 24th came in and talked about trying to get streets paved and how he went on and on. And the alder woman from the 6th is here, talked about she wished they could do one thing right. You know, pick something and do it right. Um, it's been a major problem with the street department. Um, Mr. Ken Flakes, I've discovered, is way overworked and has too many things, and it needs to be divided and taken away from him. But uh, it's deciding I don't like you, so I'm not going to deal with you so I can put misinformation out on you. Okay, that just means I am much more careful to make sure I document what I say I'm going to do. But I want to say again to the mayor's office, if you're listening, don't tell lies that make you look stupid. Don't say I'm holding up something. When the our rules and the city charter, both of them read them sometimes, read them, because I read them, says that the mayor can introduce a board bill. When the press kept printing that story and when I showed them that, they said to me, well, why would they say that? Either they're very uninformed or they're maliciously lying. Uh, Nancy Cross has put out something that's a lie. She's going to get a cease and desist letter from me, and I'm going to sue her personally if she does not withdraw the lie. Um, we as older people have enough to do without having to deal with foolishness. We're trying to do things in our individual wards to make it better. It makes the mayor look good. It makes everybody look good when we get things done that make the citizens want to stay in St. Louis. We're not trying to make people leave the city of St. Louis. Our job is to keep them in the city and for them to be happy taxpayers. Alder woman from the uh, first, do you have any questions or concerns or comments? I'm sorry, not the first, the 27. Uh, I, I just wanted to comment what Alder Woman Spencer has said about the uh, speed humps and then the follow up with Alder Woman Tyus. And so I think my frustration and probably other Alder people's frustration is I had speed bumps in not for one year, two years. There's never been down. I, I'm just, I just never got them. So she's correct. And so residents, we actually had the mayor come to a meeting and they asked about the speed bumps and they said, we've been waiting for a year. I said, no, you've been waiting for two years for the speed bumps. And so one is the war capital because I don't have that type of dollars to get as many streets as I want to get speed humps on. But two is when we, because I just told a resident that, and I had talked to Auto Woman Tyus, you know, residents, well, you're not doing anything. I said, well, if I'm giving them the list of streets that need to be paid, alleys that need to be paid, where I want the speed bumps, and I pass the money to where it needs to go, it's out of my hands. I have no more control over it. And I think that's my frustration. We have the stuff, we allocate the dollars, and the public need to understand after we allocate those dollars, we as older people are assuming it's going to be done. But when it takes two to three years to make it happen, to me, that's embarrassing for me as an older person. And two, that should be embarrassing for the city because they're not getting the projects out there. And so then I'm looked at as the bad guy because they're like, well, you're not doing your job. Well, I did my part, but it just didn't happen. So I hear all the woman Spencer saying, you know, she put all these blocks in and I just pray that, that she gets those speed bumps in because I do know that she's transferred the dollars. So now let's see if it'll happen. So that's just where I'm at. And let's call them speed humps because hey, some people hump. want bumps, okay? <laughs> hump. um, they've pointed out in North County how much higher they are. Right. And I've also made them understand the higher they are, the more risk we take if somebody hitting it at fast speed and going air bump point. And that's what Zach had told me because I had saw him in Jenny's and he said, we can't put those on streets because there will be lawsuits waiting to happen because people would damage their cars. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Auto Woman Howard. I, I know that um, Alderwoman Spencer is, is correct. And, you know, the, the lack of communication between the streets commissioner and the board of aldermen is awful. I mean, 
I had a meeting with her and we went to the site. Excuse me, the director. She's not the commissioner. We want to call oh. it because the street commissioner is Kent Flakes. It's the director. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> okay. We had a meeting and we went to the site and I asked, I said, please suggest what can be done about this. It's on a curve, you know, and I hate to put a speed hump someplace where it's not, in my judgment, not being a street engineer. Uh, but I've heard nothing, nothing in three months since October. So, and, you know, I followed up with an email and I don't, I don't know what's going on. I got one email back saying she was on leave. So I don't know if that's still true or what's going on, but I'll, I'm glad to know she'll be here Wednesday. Well, let me say, I hope she will. Okay. <laughs> that's what I hope she will. Well, she's been invited. Okay. So thank um, you so much. Thank you. Alderman Bacaro. Yeah, I'm just want to add to the uh, frustration. I'm still waiting for two hundred thousand dollars worth of sidewalks <clears throat> and fifty thousand dollars worth of speed humps. And you know, I agree. People are saying, "Joe, I thought I was supposed to be getting this," and I'm like, "So did I," <laughs> you know. And I don't understand. And they're blaming this all on the comptroller's office, saying that the comptroller is holding up all the contracts that they're not doing what they're supposed to do. And yet, all I get is running a circle. And I, I really don't care, and I hope somebody from the mayor's office is listening or somebody's listening to this, because there's absolutely no reason that this stuff shouldn't have been done and shouldn't be done. When, you know, who, figure out whose fault it is. And I do think maybe you know what, as a group, maybe we invite the press next week on Wednesday. <laughs> well, I'm serious. Do you think I'm kidding? I'm serious. You know, we don't have to invite the press. They they watch these things, um, and they are perfectly uh, welcome to come. And we're not next Wednesday. We're having a meeting this coming Wednesday because next what Wednesday I mean. is too late. Right. I'm, I'm insane. Right. Um, you know, but I, yeah, I my frustration is off the charts because. It, it's, you know, you know, everybody looks at me and looks at the different other people going, well, I thought you said, and you're right. So anyway, I, I think we should go to the press, my personal feeling. Anyway, thanks. Uh, okay. see if I know, let's see if I know how to lower my hand or somebody needs to. Okay. Um, so Alderwoman um, Spencer, back to, we're, we're sorry, the Streets Committee, we're just having a, a little bit of a, a fit here. Because we we share your frustration, okay? Um, how did you end up coming to um, a decision about exactly where you wanted your? Uh, you talked to your residents, and then they just put in requests for speed humps. Yes, that's correct, Madam Chair. And you know, it, I was getting several requests, and like I said, I did put in a, in a request to consider. You know, I mean. I'm not like the older woman from the 14th. I'm not a traffic commissioner or traffic engineer or any expert in this. So really I was hoping to have some insight, you know, about how we could best, um, you know, um, implement these. They're so expensive, you know, and if we had a more um, organized approach and one that really involved some planning um, in our neighborhoods to think through how we're going to slow traffic in a broader sense rather than kind of ad hoc just willy-nilly thrown in you know speed humps wherever we can it's it's really not the best way but it is the only way and it's the only effective way I know of doing any getting anything done is so here we are okay so I just responded to all the requests that came through me and um, here we are so I, I put them through the street department and now they're in board bill form. Okay, I will tell you, and I will encourage you, if, if the places that you're gonna put speed humps, and I don't know if you are this hand zones or not, I am, I actually drove my streets and kind of then went and gave them exact addresses of where I wanted things because um, I encountered some previous people who had gotten speed humps um, and they put them too far apart and so they didn't do what they were supposed to. So on my residential streets, uh, I, I might like a one, one block, I might have four speed humps. I have one as soon as you come onto the street. Then I have one a little further down, two in the middle and one at the end at whatever the stop sign or traffic light. And that makes people know you're on a residential street. And it doesn't take that, you know, I went out and even timed it. It doesn't take that much extra. But if you 
tend to put them further apart, they um, the people find a way to try to speed up between speed humps. So I'm just going to give you that. You you know you have a person that you work with with BPS, and I don't know what your time frame looks like, but on every street, and I like I said, I have four different neighborhoods, and almost all of them have speed humps. We I actually drove every street, and we sent emails. This is where we want them so that they will be evenly spaced. So that's just a suggestion, okay, because I've been doing this for a while now. And it has, like I said, it's really worked. It's been very expensive, but it's worth the satisfaction of people saying, I was getting ready to move, but now I'm going to stay here because I don't feel that my safety is at risk. Hmm. Do, do any Does anyone on the committee have any questions of the Alderwoman from the 20th? Anyone on the committee have any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to pass uh, Board Bill 187. I, I'm sorry, you need to uh, close on your uh, Board Bill 187. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. With that, I'm, I ask for favorable consideration from the committee uh, on Board Bill 187. Okay. Um, I'd entertain a motion that Board Bill 187 be passed out with a due pass recommendation. So Second. Moved. Previous role, unless people been added. Objection. Okay, we have a motion, a, a second, a call for previous roll. There was an objection. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Alderman Vaccaro. Aye. Alderman Howard. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Aye. Alderman Evans. Aye. Alderman Schweitzer. Alderwoman Peel. Aye. Chair Tyus. Aye. Alderwoman Howard. Aye. Alderwoman Schweitzer. We have seven aye votes. By your vote, you sustain, you sustain the motion. Board Bill 187 is passed out with the due pass recommendation. Congratulations, Alderwoman Spencer. I know your residents will be very happy. Okay. Um, Ma Madam Chair, I'll, uh, I, I will also offer, um, um, I know Alderman Oldenburg was here perhaps, but if he I'll hand his here, bill if he doesn't, if he doesn't come back by the end. Oh, I'm here. Oh, oh okay. now we're going to, we're going to all vote no now that he's here. <laughs> we're going to vote yes, but now that he showed up. <laughs> I know, you know, I had a nickel for every time that happens to me, Alderman. <laughs> Okay, so I, just, I was just going to offer to take care of Alderman Coder's belt. Um, oh, I'll read, I, right. Alderman okay, Coder uh, asked me to take care of it, so I'm taking care Excellent. of it. Okay, okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Thank you so much, Madam Chair and, and members of the committee. But good looking out for your fellow Alder people. I'll say that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Alderman. Okay, Alderman uh, Oldenburg, what board bill is that? We're going back to board bill 158. Is that what number is assigned to it? I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I don't That's know. all right. I'm talking to the clerk so she can pull it up. She's going to read. Yes, board bill number 158 introduced by Alderman Thomas Oldenburg. Pursuant to ordinance number 70333 as amended by ordinance number 71394. An ordinance directing the director of streets to install speed humps to calm the flow of traffic on the 5800 block of Wall Street between the intersections of Walsh Street and Hampton Avenue and Wall Street and Clifton Avenue, 6700 block of Eichelberger, 5100 block of McCausland Avenue between the intersections of McCausland Avenue and Itasca Street and McCausland Avenue and Delore Street, 5200 block of McCausland Avenue between the intersections of McCausland Avenue and Delore Street and McCausland Avenue and Wall Street. 7,000 block of Rhodes Drive between the intersections of Rose Drive and McKenzie Road and Rose Drive and Kingwood Drive. Wilmore Road between the intersections of Wilmore Road and Westway Road and Wilmore Road and Jamison Avenue huh? and the 6400 block of Lansdowne huh? Avenue between yes, the intersections the, of uh, Lansdowne Avenue. Excuse me, excuse me, somebody is got some the feedback. the bridge crosses on Kings Highway. Okay, that's all I need. I'm sorry about that. Uh, 6400 block of Lansdowne Avenue between the intersections of Lansdowne mm -hmm. Avenue and Childress Avenue and Lansdowne Avenue and Donovan Avenue. 
Okay. Alderman Oldenburg, you recognize to present your board bill 158 to the committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for the hearing and members. Thank you for your time. I think I, I was listening to the conversation uh, on and off, but uh, I, I resonate with all the frustration that I know the committee members as well as individual older people have with with trying to address the safety as it comes to speeding throughout neighborhoods. Um, and uh, this has been a collection of, of folks who have, have reached out to me um, several and repeated times where I've said I'd love to get the, the, the traffic experts to at least, um, you know, weigh in uh, before we just build humps because I share the frustrations everybody else does in terms of the expense, the backlog, etc. Um, but I finally just needed to move forward with the request. So I, like most of you all, try to get the um, a majority of the residents to contact me. Uh, and like you, older woman, uh, I want to make sure that, you know, again, not being a traffic expert, but I do want to make sure they get put in a good spot from the people. You know, most of the residents who live on these streets, they have the best suggestions of where these should go because they're the ones doing the living, the driving, and the watching for the most part on the street. So I, I would always like to defer to them. And every once in a while, you find someone who necessarily doesn't want the hump right in front of their house exactly. and, others, and others who, you know, could give a hoot. So uh, this has been a, I know it's a lot of humps here, but I think in the matter of efficiency, it is it is uh, taking care of a bulk of all the requests I've had over the last few months. And I would just like to move forward with uh, a due pass recommendation. Okay. Anyone on the committee have any questions of Alderman from the 16th? Anyone off the committee who is an alder person has uh, um, any questions of the alderman from the 16th? Hearing none, Alderman Oldenburg, you are uh, recognized to close on your bill. I have nothing further. I know you have a full agenda, so I, I look forward to a motion being made in adoption. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, I didn't get a motion. I didn't obtain a motion that board. Bill 158 be passed out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. second. Oh, Previous second. roll. Oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, did you get who was the who did the motion? I got uh Alderwoman Howard moved and then Alderwoman Evans second. Okay. I asked for previous roll. So we have a motion, a second, and a call for previous roll. Any objections to previous roll? Hearing none, board bill one. Oh, great. 158 is passed out with a due pass recommendation. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Okay. So the next thing, let's try to get back on here. Um, Lisa Middlebrook, you have a board bill. Alderwoman Middlebrook, I'm sorry. Are you here? Yes, ma'am, I am. Okay. You have board bill 166. Um, because we're not, board bill 153 is no longer uh, being requested because we got that taken care of. So board bill 166, um, Madam Clerk, would you uh, read the preamble, uh, the introduction to board bill 166? Board bill number 166 introduced by Alderwoman Lisa Middlebrook, an ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service to conditionally vacate above surface, surface and subsurface rights for vehicle equestrian and pedestrian travel in a 15 foot wide unnamed street located between city block 9112 and 9115 beginning at Hall Street and continuing east 933.785 equal 10.605 feet to its ter terminus in the city of St. Louis Missouri as here at herein after described in ordinance with charter authority and in conformity with section 14 of article 10 i'm sorry 21 of the charter and imposing certain conditions on such vacation okay alderwoman you are recognized to present your board bill before the street committee thank you madam chair and members of the committee madam chair i just want to thank you for hearing board bill 166 in my five years down here, I didn't think life could be so hard, but it um, <laughs> proved me wrong because what I thought was, you know, pretty simple uh, just hasn't been. So thank you. Um, the overall purpose of this bill is just to um, conditionally vacate uh, the streets that were named or the areas that were named for um, improvement. The petitioner of this is Hall Street Properties, and they're going to consolidate. They're using this to consolidate property. Um, I do have 
Dave Sweeney, I believe he's here. If there are any questions regarding this, I won't go any further and belabor your day, make it longer. Can't hear you, Tyus. Do you need him to testify? He probably would hurt your case. We're probably going to vote for it and maybe not vote for it if Dave Sweeney speaks to <laughs> We sure don't. <laughs> this has been a long time. No, no, don't make this he, he, he knows I'm teasing. <laughs> is there something that he needs to, is there someone who wants to ask questions of Mr. Sweeney on the committee? Um, um, Mr. Sweeney, if you would unmute for a minute, do you, <clears throat> do you want to testify if you don't need to? Only for questions, Madam Chair. Okay. If there's no one that has any questions, anybody have any questions of Alderwoman Middlebrook? There seems to be no need for your testimony, so I don't have to swear you in, uh, Mr. Sweeney. I appreciate you showing up. Um, um, Alderwoman Middlebrook, you are recognized to close on board Bill 166. Thank you. I ask for your favorable consideration in passing out um, board Bill 166. Thank you. Okay, um, I have, uh, I will entertain a motion uh, that board bill 166 be passed out with the due pass recommendation. I'll make so a motion. Moved. With, well, I'll second that then in previous role. We have a motion, a second and call for previous role. Any objections to previous role? Hearing none, board bill 166 is passed out with a due pass recommendation for all your troubles, Alderwoman uh, Middlebrook. See how easy it was once you came before a very nice, Small, favorable committee. <laughs> well, you know, maybe others are watching this <laughs> and they're taking notes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too. Okay. Let's see here. Alderwoman uh, Davis. So um, we're going to get back to you. Um, and so we're going to actually, I don't know if you heard my message. We're going to also have a meeting Wednesday. That's what I called you about because I wanted to make sure that we worked on whatever you didn't have done because I didn't, you, for some reason, your speed humps didn't get done and I do have an amendment for it. Um, so if you, can, if you can't come, if you still want the speed humps, we're, gonna, uh, 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 we're not gonna adjourn. We're just gonna continue the meeting to Wednesday at 10 for that. And I have something also that didn't get an amendment for it. So any, I know that you have board bill, let's see here, two um, that's prepared to go. But I didn't know if you had board bill 154 and 155. Um, yeah. I know, what, I'm sorry, 154 and 156. And I have your amendment for 156. So we're going to have okay. it Wednesday, continue it to Wednesday, if that's okay with you, so you can get done. Whatever you think is best, man. Okay. And I didn't know what you wanted to do with 154, if that was ready to go or not. It was 154 on the mm -hmm. Allen's. Yes. Okay, because I have a, it's a, it's an amendment, and I've, I've identified the area for all those alleys to have that happen. Okay, uh, so I have that. Okay. I can have that ready for Wednesday. Okay, that'll be good. Okay, okay. so we'll just take up Board Bill One Thirty Two, which is the uh, honorary street naming, and Madam, okay. Clark, would you please read uh, the preamble to Board Bill One Thirty Two? Floor bill number 132 introduced by Alderwoman Marlene Davis. The proposed bill authorizes the honorary street name Nancy and Ken Kravitzberg Way pursuant to ordinance number 68937, which shall begin at the intersection of Washington Avenue and North Leonard Avenue and run east on Washington Avenue to the intersection of Washington Avenue and North Teresa Avenue. Okay. Alderwoman Davis, you are recognized to present your bill to the Streets Committee. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Uh, this board bill is one that I think is so much needed based on the contributions and the caring of this husband and wife and their family. Their foundation, the Cranberries Arts Foundation, uh, most people knew it from the beginning it was just called Craft Alliance when they had an office in, and, and services in U City, but has since moved into the city of St. Louis, has provided so much funding and support, renovation of buildings, uh, promoting artists, most especially minority artists, uh, and um, 
they've taken a whole city block at the 3300 block of Washington. And it's absolutely incredible uh, what they have done there. They even uh, saved circus uh, flora and uh, took all of that and redid it with state-of-the-art technology. Uh, and, and we should be using it more. So um, it gives me great honor to present this uh, resolution for the naming, uh, board bill for the naming of that street in their honor because Nancy and King Kranzberg, they, de they deserve it. I thank you. Um, I would like to have, before we ask for questions, I'd like to have my name added, if you don't mind, Alderwoman. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone on the streets committee that, that has questions about Alderwoman Davis? I would like to just make a motion. We do it in bank on a committee, but that's up to you if you're accepting that. Otherwise, add my name. Alderwoman, would you uh, be opposed to us at being in bank out of street committee? No, I think that's wonderful. Okay. All right. Um, so no one has any questions. Auto woman, um, Madam Clerk, um, would you take note that we are going to pass this out in bank? Yes. Uh, no one has any objections uh, in bank from the streets committee. Yes, ma'am. It was uh, made by Alderman Vaccaro. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Alder woman, you are recognized to close on board bill 132. Uh, I just renew my uh, ask for this to be moved with the new, and preferably as you have already indicated with unanimous vote. And thank you so much. <laughs> All right. That, we want to thank our alderman from the 23rd. That was his great idea. Um, thank you. <laughs> and so I will entertain a motion that board bill one, what was it? One, ooh, 132. Boy, 32, 132 be passed out. Yeah. Uh, of committee with a due pass recommendation with uh, uh, unanimous consent and with uh, everyone's name added on to it. Second. Well, I'll, I'll make the motion. So moved. And previous roll. We have a motion, a second, and a, and a call for previous roll. Any objections for previous roll? Hearing none, or Bill 132 is passed out with everyone's name. Thank you. And we will be back here um, Wednesday at 10 for your other two bills. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Bye -bye. Um, let's see. Alderwoman from the 17th. You have somebody here that is a guest speaker. Are they? Yes, I still see him. Um, Alderwoman, um, I'm sorry, Madam Clerk, would you please read uh, the introduction to board bill 143, please? Board Bill Number 143, introduced by Alderwoman Tina Peel, an ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service to conditionally vacate above surface, surface and subsurface rights for vehicle escrigen and pedestrian travel in areas adjacent to City Block 3888-1 and a regular portion of Barnes Hospital Plaza from Kings Highway East, 625.31 feet to an irregular portion of Kings Highway beginning 133.96 feet north of Bourne's Hospital Plaza and extending northward one point, I'm sorry, 125.8 feet for aerial and sur subsurface only. Three, a 4.55 foot by 32.08 foot section of Bourne's Hospital Plaza near the center line of the street beginning two. 49.96 feet east of Kings Highway in the city of St. Louis, Missouri, as here and after described in accordance with charter authority and in conformity with section 14 of article 21 of the charter and imposing certain conditions on such vacations. Okay. Um, Alderwoman, um, you are, before we get started, I see you have one guest speaker here. Uh, that's going to speak in favor of it. I would like for Mr. Bratcher to raise his hand, his right hand. Um, we had such a good conversation. I feel like <laughs> I know you. <laughs> um, it is uh, required for the Board of Aldermen when we have speakers outside of our uh, domain that we, they uh, affirm or, or swear, whichever you want. I, Mr. Gregory Batcher, Bratcher, is it Bratcher? <clears throat> it's Bratcher. Um, do solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony I'm, I'm about to give before the streets committee is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. 
I do affirm. Thank you. Okay, Alderwoman from the 17th, you are recognized to present Board Bill 143 to the committee. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, the petitioners are BJC and WashU. Uh, this Board Bill 143 is conditionally vacating uh, space in front of the former Queenie Tower, uh, which is located on Kings Highway in the Barnes Jewish Hospital Plaza. Um, <clears throat> this will uh, support the construction of um, a new wider pedestrian bridge. BJC and Wash U want to relocate the bridge that goes over the Barnes Jewish Hospital Plaza, the south parking lot on Kings Highway. There's a bridge that attaches to uh, the, what I'd say, the entranceway um, between that street. And why they wanna vacate that land is that there are gonna be columns that need to be built for the new pedestrian bridge. That new pedestrian bridge is going to be located east of the old and current bridge. The current bridge will come down after the new bridge is built and is functional. And then they'll be taking down the current bridge. The other reason that they want to have a street vacation is because there are vaults underneath the sidewalk on Kings Highway, again, located by the Barnes Jewish Hospital Plaza. There are utility vaults underneath that sidewalk. And uh, in uh, maybe a decade or so, and Mr. Bratcher could um, speak on this a little bit more about these vaults underneath the sidewalk, but they will need to be, um, they will need to come up um, and be disposed of. Um, I am going to pass uh, uh, this on to uh, Mr. Bratcher to speak about this, uh, these vacations that they're requesting in a little bit more detail, um, Madam Chair. Okay, I was, so there, I was looking for uh, pictures. So um, Mr. Bra on. Mr. Bratcher is going to be, uh, can share, if we can have him, sh have us share the screen with him, he will be um, showing the pictures. Okay, that's great. Okay, because I just went on Google Earth to look at to look at it. Um, Mr. Bratcher, you are recognized. And Madam Clerk, can we do screen? Yep, you got it already. Screen share. Is it there? Okay. Yes. So, um, in essence, what this is is a, re a reconfiguration for this package in front of you is a reconfiguration of that drop off section there, your drop off and valet, and then. Around the corner are the vaults that Alderwoman Peel was, was talking about. So it's two in this one package. The drop-off section, we're going to make it a little more intuitive where you should uh, pull up to. We're going to make the flow better. And then, as she said, around the corner is, is this vault that will facilitate in the future. It, it will be invisible to anyone walking by. But in some future date, 20 years from now, when we need to replace the emergency generator or the tanks, that will make it much less disruptive to the hospital to have that vault. It'll look just like a regular sidewalk. It'll be landscaped just like the landscaping on either side of it. You won't be able to tell, but 20 years from now, it'll be really important to have. People will okay. thank you 20 years from now. And so the old bridge, is this, this is not on Kings Highway. It's on the side street that goes to the yeah. parking lot? Correct. Yeah. Okay, because I was looking for Kings. When I heard Kings Highway, I was like, I've been driving that for 45, 50 years. I've never noticed this bridge over Kings Highway. So, no, no, okay. it's on that that side street. It's got it's one, it's one block up. long. Right, okay, right. So now I get you. That's yeah. what I thought it was too. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, does anyone on the committee have any questions? I do. Okay, Alderwoman Howard, you're recognized. Um. So this is going to be west of the current walkover, is that correct? It is. It is. The new bridge is west of the old bridge. Uh, I may have confused the older woman on, on some of that. So, yes. It, and the reason is we want to keep a bridge open all the time. We never want to have people having to cross a grade. So we build the new bridge. Once it's open, tear down the old bridge. That's, yeah. And it... I, I did. I missed what you were saying about the vault. What is that? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. 
You know, I don't have it on this screen, but around the corner on King's Highway, if you were to go around the corner, there's a small section on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. There will be this concrete empty box underneath the sidewalk that will facilitate at some future date, 20 years, 30 years from now, if we need to replace the generator or that emergency generator that would be in the building proper, okay, it'll okay. make it much easier to just yeah. knock out the it's wall just... and bring it out through that vault and take it to the street. Yeah. Otherwise, okay. we'd have to cut it up, disassemble it, put it on the freight elevator, take it up to the loading dock. It makes things much right. less disruptive. Okay. And that's I'm a pretty afraid. important key thing, the generator. Wait a minute. Oh. Hold on a minute. Is <laughs> Uh, do we need to put that picture back up uh, or is everybody okay with what they've seen? Oh, I didn't take it down. Did someone Who else? Who took it I... down? Somebody took it down. I believe I accidentally took it down. <laughs> the I can started. take it. Do you want it back up? I can. But please put it back up until we're finished ask, asking questions. Thank you. Is it back? Yes, it's yes. back. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Alderwoman Howard. Oh, so this, in other words, they'll have access to the new tower and and the whole hospital from this end as they do with the current bridge. Yes, this is the main entrance to the hospital other than the emergency room. I got you. And the, and the bridge you can see is wider. It's this hourglass shape so that we mm -hmm. can have health screenings. You know, knock wood, we never need that again. But if we need that again, it's much better configured to take care of that kind of thing. And it looks a little bit shorter. Well, it's a slightly bit shorter, but a part of that is just sort of the way the entryways work on each of these. I, it, I, yeah. Okay. Well, that's all I have. Thank you so much. Surely. I'm looking forward to the finish of that tower and seeing how it looks. So it should be nice. It should make a nice bookend with that and the other building at the other end of Kings Highway and yeah. uh, Forest Park Parkway. Well, thank you so much. Thank and you. Thank, thank you for the hospital and serving St. Louis the way it does. All of them, thank you. Okay, anyone else on the committee have a question or a concern? I uh, don't have a concern or question. I just wanna have, I have a statement. I know when I was a carrier, I used to deliver flowers. So I am very familiar with the old bridge going uh, from the parking lot to the <laughs> hospital. Yes, <laughs> so, uh, I am glad to see that they're doing uh, development to improve that, that bridgeway. But yes, uh, I look forward to it, to seeing the project completed. Thank you, older woman. It should be easier to carry flowers in. It's, it's much less narrow. <laughs> Is there anyone else? Any, anyone else? Okay, you can take that down now. Um, I want to say, Mr. Bratcher, I'm, I guess I'm a person that always feels like, oh, that's going to be gone now. So I like to go across the little bridge, leaving the parking lot. I've had to do that several times to go visit people. And is that the one that's lit, lit up? Is that the it one? does have the sort of Christmas tree lighting. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, and all the women um, from the 17th, you are going in and out again. I don't know if you're about to... There, yeah. <laughs> All right. There you go. Okay. So I like it, but I do know that there has to be progress. Uh, I remember, I think when you built the Queenie Tower. So now here we are, <laughs> those are gone. And, <laughs> and uh, you have a very different landscape along Kings Highway than you had 50, 60 years ago. So I thought they would get rid of Queenie Towers. I thought that was the most <laughs> vibrant thing and look we got a whole <laughs> double left. <laughs> so anyway if is there anyone that's not on the committee that is uh, an older person that has any questions i don't see anybody everybody's left now okay hearing no questions uh older woman from the uh, 17th you are recognized to uh close on board bill 143 yes thank you uh, madam chair members of the committee I ask for your favorable consideration to pass this board uh, bill with a due pass recommendation. Thank you. Okay, I'll entertain a motion that board bill 143 be passed out with the due pass recommendation. So moved. So moved. Second. In previous role. Um, no, Alderwoman Schweitzer is back. So oh, we got okay. a motion and a second. 
So I want her to just be able, we've been using her for previous role, but I want her to use her own voice, please. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Madam a Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Vicaro. Aye. Alderwoman Howard. Aye. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Aye. Alderwoman Evans. Aye. Alderwoman Schweitzer. Aye. Alderwoman Peel. Oops. Aye. Chair Tyus. Aye. We have eight aye votes. By your vote, you sustain the motion board bill 171 is passed out with a due pass recommendation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And I really enjoyed the conversation we had. You all should have been online. We had a, a party, uh, Mr. Bratcher and I. So I appreciate I'll say this. Go Chiefs. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> have a good day. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, um, Mr. Vice President, um, I am sponsor I am um, doing Alderman Coder's board bill 171. So do can you take uh, possession of this. There you go. Yes, ma'am. You said it's a uh, board bill 141? 171. 171. All right. You are recognized on board bill 171. Okay. If the clerk could read. Board bill number 171 introduced by Alderman John Kotar, an ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service authorizing and directing the mayor and comptroller of the city of St. Louis to grant a non-exclusive access easement to Herwick Family LP, a Missouri Limited Partnership, its successors and assigns encumbering a portion of a certain parcel of real estate belonging to the city of St. Louis Morgue, located in Rudlitz Edition, Lot W34, E35 of Clark Avenue in City Block 216, more commonly known as 1300 Block Clark Avenue, and containing a servability clause. Okay, thank you. Um, Board Bill 171 is a bill sponsored by Alderman John Coder, or Jack as we know him. Um, the Board Bill seeks to give a non exclusive uh, access easement to a Missouri Limited Partnership, which is uh, on uh, Clark Avenue in the city. Um, 1300 Clark Avenue. Um, um, Alderman Coder could not be here today, and I told him I would handle the board bill for him. If you look, there is a picture of where approximately this will be located. This is on Exhibit A of board bill uh, 171. And um, I'd ask this committee for your favorable cons uh, consideration. All right. Um, we don't have any speakers, do we? No speakers. All right. So I just generally ask, uh, this, is there anyone in the committee that has any questions? Uh, raise your hand if you do. All right, looks like there is none. Seeing that, I will entertain a motion on passing board bill 171. One. One. Sorry, I entertain a motion on passing board bill 171 out with a due pass recommendation. I'll make a motion we pass board bill 171 out with a due pass recommendation. Second. And previous right, it's move. And move second and then I request a previous roll. Any objection? Okay, none. Board Bill 171 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Thank you. And Alderman Coder yeah. also thanks you. This is a wonderful committee we sit on. Okay, I'll take the realms back. Um, so we are not going to hear Board Bill 132 um, and, and Board Bill 154. And, and then, I'm sorry, Board Bill 156. And then I have a board bill. We, we are going to recess until 10 a.m. on Wednesday to deal with those three board bills. Um, so um, is, if anyone has anything else to bring before the committee, we if not, we're going to recess until Wednesday at 10 a.m. And I've already spoken with the clerk about this. What were those three board bills again? I have four. Um, board bill. Number 80. Introduced by Alderman Page. Oh, yes. Well, that one's not going to be heard. He asked for that not to. So eight, it is for what, 80, 141, uh, 154, yes. 156. Yes. And That's then I told you uh, Ottawa Middlebrook's uh, bill was already taken care of. We won't be doing that because it was supposed to be on a 
the committee uh, several weeks ago and it wasn't. And so I did it on my board bill on the floor because of that, because we, we had uh, omitted <clears throat> putting it on the calendar. So what can we go through what's going to be heard again? Yes. Because there was a, a big mix in there this time. Yeah. So 80 is off the table now? No. Board Bill 80, Board Bill 141, Board Bill 154, and Board Bill 156 will be heard Wednesday. Gotcha. Board Bill 153, which was introduced by Alderwoman Middlebrook, is off the table. Any other questions? No, that's all. I just thought you said like 80, he had asked not to be heard. That's why I well, thought. Well, he, he may not. I What I do at the end of the session is I put everybody's bills in. Everybody gets a chance, so they can't say they didn't have a chance to have it heard. So since we are continuing, he has not said that he's not perfect. Uh, so until I, he tells me that it is on, Ottawa Middlebrook already got hers done. That's why I knew that we were not going to be hearing that. Okay. okay? 10 o'clock on Wednesday. Anyone yeah. else have anything else they need to bring before the committee? Hearing none, we will recess. The committee is recessed until 10 a.m. on Wednesday, mm -hmm. February the 8th. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Good morning. Today is uh, Wednesday, February 8th. At approximately 10.20 a.m., we are reconvening the Board of Aldermen's uh, Street Traffic and Refuse Committee meeting that we held uh, on Monday, um, February the 6th, because we had a few bills that needed some um, corrections or really we needed amendments to the bill. And we were able to get those done. And um, so we have before us uh, the bills that did not get done in the previous uh, hearing on Monday, we have uh, Board Bill 141 introduced by myself, Alderwoman Tyus, which is uh, uh, the St. Louis Works budget for three years. We have Board Bill 154, which is a board bill by Alderwoman uh, Davis. I think it's regarding alleys. And then we have Board Bill 156 which is also a board bill by Alderwoman Davis. And I think that one is um, speed humps. So Alderwoman Davis had to go to the uh, doctor, I think, and she might pop in here later. So usually I do me last, but since we have all these beautiful, uh, wonderful guests here, we're gonna uh, do my board bill first. And if she doesn't come, I will handle her her board bills also. There should be some amendments in the uh, Google Drive. Um, I just sent the last one over a few minutes ago. Madam Clerk, do you see there should be an amendment for 141, 154, and I'm sorry, yeah, 154 and 156. Okay, I do have 154 and um, 141. Okay. I'm waiting on... Uh, 156. Also, are you going to uh, do board bill 80? Um, so um, the alderman from the fifth was invited because I cleared out everything that was in the uh, committee. He didn't know if he was going to be able to uh, be prepared for that or not. So he has not in indicated to me that he would, but I wanted to be, if he wants to come up, come to the committee and uh, present his bill, then I'm open to that. But if he doesn't, he knows it dies in committee, but okay. he's had ample opportunity to have his bill heard. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Vice Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? We woke up this morning. One more day to get it right. All right. So um, first, I'm going to start. I, we got some guests here, so I'm going to start letting them talk and talk about the bill. Then I'm going to let you take over since I'm going to present the bill. And I also have an amendment because uh, the bill actually is for three years, 2021, 2022, and 2023. So I wrote up an amendment, and then um, uh, Director Williams sent me uh, a uh, Excel file that showed all three, the total amount of the budget, and then individual years. And I changed the budget to uh, the board bill to reflect that board bill 141 
um, my amendments was to show that it was for 2021, 2022, and 2023, and uh, the amount has been adjusted, and we'll get into that. But we we have here um, uh, Mr. Kent Flakes. We have uh, uh, who is the Commissioner of Streets, Bethany Williams, who is the Director of Streets, Nancy Cross, who's the uh, Director of Operations here. So we have all three people here, and Rich Bradley, the D Director of VPS. Good morning, everyone. Um, so we brought them here for, because people have other questions besides this, but we want to get this budget uh, completed for all three years and we want to get it very straight um, so that people stop putting misinformation out on me because otherwise we're going to be in court with a lawsuit that I in no way held up any such budget at any such time. Not only that, for those who can read, they ought to read our rules and the charter because everybody that was told that was then provided, and that would be the press, I then provided them a copy of our rules in the charter. No alderman can ever hold up any bill from the mayor's office because the mayor herself or himself can introduce board bills at the uh, board. So for those who are new and don't know what they're talking about and put misinformation out, they need to apologize, write a written apology to me or we're gonna be in court because I don't like people to tell lies on me because if I wanna hold something up, everybody on this call should know I'll hold it up in the middle of Market and 12th Street and say I'm holding it up. There is no Sharon Tyus that says, I'm scared to tell you I'm holding something up. Only people who do not understand Sharon Tyus would say, put out a letter like that and then let me laugh at them for months on end before I finally tell the press how really ignorant that sounds to say I'm holding it up since the mayor's office herself can put it out. So I'm gonna say one more time, Ms. Cross, stop it, cause I punch back. You may be from Boston, but I'm from Decatur, Illinois, home of the unions, about 28 unions. All my life, I've learned how to punch back, okay? So I will expect a letter of apology withdrawing your statement saying that I held up anything. Not only did I not hold it up, I never promised to uh, introduce a bill until I did in December after talking to the director of streets. I cannot hold you all up from introducing any bills. The, uh, the commissioner of streets even said he didn't even do the other bill. This is all your fault or director's fault and not necessarily Williams because the director was Jamie at that time that didn't get something done. Don't try to put it on me. Don't do that because you have to come before my committee and I'm not going to be a happy camper only because I care about the greater good. Am I doing this? OK, but I hate when people lie on me because you do not have to look for Sharon Tyler if she's holding something up because she will be saying it and calling the news and saying, and the reason why I'm not doing it is this, this, and this. So stop all that mess. When you don't know how to do something, the best way to do it is to call me up. And I'm, most of these people on this committee will tell them, tell you, I will help them. If they come to me and say, how do you do this? I help them. I've helped that administration so many times. It's not funny. I've cleaned up messes. Stop this stupidness. It is stupid to keep telling lies. And then you look really foolish when the press says, well, if they can introduce a bill, why were they saying that about you? Because they were lying on me. That's why. So please don't do that. We can work together if you do not lie on me. But if you put out things that are not true, I will come back and punch back. And you will always lose because nobody knows the rules of how to get at them probably better than me in this city. Okay. So I don't do that. You owe me an apology. And if not, I've already contacted the lawyer. I'm going to sue you because you shopped this around as if it was the truth and you did not do your due diligence to find out that I actually had called Miss Williams back and called her secretary when I didn't get her. You did not do this. This has to stop. We cannot continue this. I'm going to be back here. I'm going to be back here, and I hope that you learn how to pick up the phone and try to ask questions instead of make false accusations. That's what I want to say. Now, um, who did this budget? Was it you, Mr. Flake, or was it you, um, uh, Director Williams? Yeah, I completed this budget. Okay. Um, so um, you want to tell us a little about a bit about this budget? Uh, it's pretty similar to the years past other than this one's for three years uh i don't know if you guys have both uh the one-year budget and the three-year budget as uh available to you but if you look at the one-year budget it's very similar 
to what the previous year's one year budgets were. Uh, my spreadsheet, I don't know if it's the same one you guys have or not. Um, so we have what the director sent us just to let you know, she sent me, which I put on the Google Drive, I had original bill, which had every the two years combined, and it did it had only 9,800. And then she sent me in December one that added the I had told her that on when we uh, met in December that I would do all three and get them through in time. Um, which I intend to do because I pa if we pass it out, I'll suspend the rules and we'll get it done before signing by sign and die. And so uh, she sent me the two budgets combined. I told her I didn't like that. I wanted it broken out. So she then sent me an X, uh, Excel file that showed 2021, 22, and 23. Okay, so I did put that on the Google Drive for my, the committee to see. That way, and then I changed the board bill a little bit to reflect that uh, we were doing um, 2021, 2022, and 2023. Um, so, and we can look at each tab and look at each year. That's what she sent me. So, I don't know okay. if you have that or not. If it's not, it's very similar to what I have. Uh, okay. So, the, the one year is very similar to what we've seen since I think I started doing this budget in 2005, 2006, something like that. Uh, so nothing much in the one year's change. Of course, it looks different in the three-year variety because it's three years and not one year. Uh, just kind of in short, uh, if you go from left to right, the column for 510, that is essentially the 50-50 sidewalk program. Uh, the salaries there are, are four inspectors of the 50-50 sidewalk program. I don't know if you guys have highlights on yours or not. If you look down to the 5652. Yes, we have highlights. Yep, that would be the anticipated dollar amount going toward 5050 contractors. Uh, the yellow highlights mean that it's actually going to wards, uh, not salaries or something else. Uh, if you look at 511, uh, also you have a, a, a camera tech in there. Uh, then you have the 40,000 and the 75,000. That's essentially your guys' camera maintenance funds that you usually get hit up for by Jamie in our capital meetings or St. Louis works slash capital meetings. Uh, 514, uh, you get a lot of salaries there, but the 1,666,667 1, is actually towards asphalt. Uh, 5238, 5239, and some of these other ones are just uh, just incidentals for the most part. The 173, 333, that actually goes towards paving equipment uh, as far as pavers, millers, bobcats, whatever we actually need to, to keep the paving program going. Uh, 214 is forestry. Uh, I think you got an arborist in there. And typically, most aldermen don't use much money for street trees out of St. Louis Works, but it has happened. So we got that $8,333 $8, uh, placeholder in there. And also, once I discuss all this with all the aldermen, uh, if we figure out aldermen what to use more. Uh, let's say more money towards 50-50 instead of paving, uh, we'll actually do a transfer on our end. Uh, so let's say I only have $1.5 million in actual paving and we get $166,667 that were left over. And let's say more people committed to 50-50, we would actually transfer that $166,000 to that 510 5652 account, which currently has 922,000. Okay. Uh, 900 is Board of Public Service. There's a liaison in there. Uh, and also, 5652 is for some bridge repair work, just uh, usually the smaller repairs that help keep expansion joints and that kind of stuff in there. And then 910 is equipment services. Uh, you have some salaries there, obviously. Uh, most of this money is to repair our paving equipment for 
you got someone in there for for parts you get someone in there for labor you have someone in there so we, not everybody repairs uh, a milling machine or a paver so some of it we have to send to the dealer to actually get it fixed uh, but the yellow highlights are what actually go to the wards and it's ballpark 97,000 a year per ward. Take that times three, you're just shy of 300,000 over 2021, 2022, and 2023. And that's the short synopsis of what you're looking at there. Okay, so I have a question. So since we're gonna, in a very few short period of time, some of us are not going to be here. We're going down to 14. I want to try to find a way because this has been held up and for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, I know what you guys are going through. Like I tell you now, now that I understand more what you do, somebody needs to take some of what you do and give it to somebody else. You do too much and makes it too hard to get things done in a timely manner. And I'm not blowing smoke. You know who I am. If I'm mad, I say it, okay? <laughs> but you do too much. And so it needs to be redirected. You cannot do all of that. Um, but we have all the people like Alderwoman Howard has her hands up right now. She's not going to be here, but I want to make sure that her stuff gets done because it's really not our her fault. It's, you know, circumstances, people leaving. Is there a way, and I'm talking to you, both you, Mr. Flake, and you, Mr. Bradley, that we could assure that the people that don't come back here, if they get their stuff in in time, that we can make sure that they get their things done? So I think you're probably referring to word capital on that. Is that correct? Right. So <clears throat> what we have traditionally done when um, an alder person changes, and keep in mind, we've never had a carte blanche change of every one <laughs> of the consolidation. So this is very, very new for us as well. <clears throat> but what we've always done in BPS is, is that if a fund is into a project, and a project has a notice to proceed to a contractor, it is locked into that contract. So a new alderman comes in and they say, well, I would like to get rid of funding. If it's locked into a contract, it's contractually obligated, right? So even right. if it's encumbered, the problem with an encumbered fund is, is that technically it's not contractually locked in anything. So encumbered funds can be reappropriated. As I mentioned to the committee of the Board of Aldermen, when they asked, you know, my thoughts on this, it, it's relatively simple in my mind. You guys are the policymakers. You write the rules. We simply follow what you tell us. So, you know, if there's a way that you want that funding locked into something, you just have to write it that way. And that's what I was, but, you know, so we kind of can't do board bills, but I wanted to bring a resolution on the floor. Uh, Friday saying exactly what you said. I want to get with you to get the exact wording because I don't think it's fair, um, you know, uh, that they don't get to lock in whoever is. If, if it's me that doesn't come back, whoever doesn't come back, we were here and normally it would be okay because you got one or two people, but you got this expansive amount of people and things that needed to get done. And I think the board has been kind of a uh, good at waiting um, and, and letting you catch up with some of the things you had. So I would like to see us be able to do that. Um, and so um, Alderwoman Howard had her hand up first. Alderwoman Howard, I guess she stepped away for, I'm here. I'm here, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> uh, my question is, we have two spreadsheets uh, in the drive. There's three C and three B. I don't see any difference. I haven't went line by line, but is there one we should be looking at or are they both the same? One of them should have a tab that says budget 2021, 2022, and 2023. One of them is Excel and one of them is a PDF. I, right. I get that, but I, I guess they're the same. Yes, right? they're the same. This oh, one, some people may not have Excel, so they put it in PDF. I I see. I just, I was like, okay, they look the same. I just, I knew one was Excel and one was PDF, but I didn't know. Okay, I got it. That's all I have for now. Do you, do you agree that we should kind of try to lock something in so that oh, we get most with them? Definitely because, you know, with the, I've never worked, you know, I've been in an office for 13 years and most of the time things are like on an 18 month turnaround. 
since the pandemic, things have just crawled and it's been really hard to explain to people, you know, we don't have the people, we don't have the, you know, and, and it's just, it's frustrating because, you know, I don't like leaving things undone that I've started. So if we could get some of the sidewalks or whatever done, I know uh, Zach, I don't know if he's still uh, on grand jury duty, uh, but I know he's tried to, and I, he told me he would be in the war in this ward, I think in the spring, I can't remember. Um, but, you know, I understand that's another handicap that's put you behind that, you know, you don't have somebody, you don't have another Zach. So uh, he does a wonderful job, but, you know, circumstances happen. But if we could get whatever's in the, in the queue up and running, that would be great. Okay. Um, I, you know, there's part of my ward that I won't serve anymore. Well, actually, there's two parts of my ward I won't serve. I won't serve South. The, the ward is being changed and I won't serve anybody. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will. You'll still be out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Southampton and then uh, Bebo east of, of uh, Graboy will be out of the second ward. So it's, you know, I'm thinking uh, Alderwoman Schweitzer will have that portion. I don't know about, I, I, I don't know who will have. Yeah, I do know, but I don't know. We don't know who will have anything really. All right. Uh, we have an election coming. So, but anyway, that's, that's down another rabbit hole. But um, I, it, whatever we can get done, please, let's, let's get it done. And I've got some other things that I've, I've been working on. And um, I was told by, um, Andrew that you know maybe we can't do it but I, I think if we can get whatever we can get done and and exhaust my funds I'd appreciate it okay? okay and Rich I think you've been very cooperative in getting things done whenever whenever it's been you know ringing the bell and you know all hands on deck but you know I don't like to do that for everything so thank you so much and if we could get the gas company out of here we could pave <laughs> 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 yeah, they, they have tore almost every street in my ward. <laughs> oh my God, they, it's a mess. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much. All right. Autowoman Swanson. Thank you so much. Uh, I agree with the comments about having making sure that the where you want word capital to go is where it's where it's going uh for what's still in the accounts for the end of you know what is currently the 13th what's currently the first 14th i understand that completely and i agree and i that's why i def, i was in support of the amendment that allowed allocated funds to stay where they were allocated for because i think that's a good step for making sure that that all happens um even if there's not contracts on them uh you know, I, I when I became an older person, I did not move any funds out of anywhere uh, to to change what my you know my predecessor had done and what people had wanted her to do. I mean, that's why it was there. Uh, so I hope that the next board is thoughtful in that same way. Um, regarding this this budget, I'm really really excited for this to move forward and and very hopeful for uh, work to you know, a lot of this work to be starting soon. When I'm at community meetings, I will have people ask me why haven't they seen paving happening. And I think this is the answer, right? That for the last few years, there just has not been. Kent, Beth Bethany, I guess that's probably to you. Yeah, I mean, th this is substantial. I mean, it's that's 300,000 extra dollars on top of your capital. So, or ballpark 300,000 on top of your capital. Uh, and we know the capital funds by the time you buy dumpsters and trees and everything else that so we sit in a room and, and discuss every spring uh three hundred thousand dollars i mean it's almost an extra year worth of budget right uh, on top of that over three years so so yeah i mean this definitely helps going toward paving or 50 50 or right or whatever yeah when i was in my ward capital meeting the first year and we did st louis works funds all of the st louis funds money in the 13th ward was put towards repaving and those have not been spent because there's only 2021. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, because that's that's where the, there's some some of the word capital in 13 has been allocated to to paving. Uh, do you imagine that the 
the funds that are allocated to, uh, to paving projects in Ward Capital will work hand in hand with the St. Louis Works funds and an ability to get more done quickly? Or is it going to be a situation in which you have, you'll get through all the St. Louis Works funds projects and then the Ward Capital or vice versa? Usually they go hand in hand, but uh, the ARPA funds are going to play another interesting part in this. Right, and I and I know that that has been interesting with passing so much repaving money over the summer, and then those streets not having been paved yet because now we just passed more funds for the traffic calming along some of those same streets, some of which has had plans but doesn't have designs. And so you're thinking, this is you're nodding, so I'm, I assume I'm saying what you're thinking that you can't pave until the traffic calming plan's done. You're not going to do the traffic calming until the paving is happening at the same time. So, yeah. <laughs> All the whole entire I agree with that reaction. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot happening at once. Um, but I know that, you know, in 13th Ward, there's a lot of, uh, and 14th Ward and 12th Ward, there's been a lot of funds put towards um, King's Highway traffic calming because the plan or the study was done in 2019. And then now, there is federal funds because we, we, you know, when we met with you all and Alderman Howard and Stevens and I met with, with you all and we said, you know, we want to move forward on this. We put what would end up, what we thought would have ended up being the ward match for federal funds. And now here are the federal funds. Um, so, do you have any timeline on, on those projects now that we feel pretty good about the ARPA funds being designated or allocated for those? Is it focused on the paving or is it focused on the traffic? Well, we have paving, traffic calming, yeah. and the ward capital funds going in all at the same time. Um, so, you know, there's going to be at least three sources of funding. Well, ARPA funds being one. So I guess, well, St. Louis Works, ward capital, and ARPA funds all going towards, in at least the 13th ward, one of the big ones is Kings Highway. Um, and uh, when do you think we should expect that? I, I can't speak on the on the what five main streets. Uh, Rich may have a better idea on that, but but I will say as far as paving goes, uh, this year as as soon as we get decent weather, which I assume is going to be sometime in April, uh, we're going to be paving somewhere uh, because we know that we have a lot of paving to do over the next two years. So I, I can't waste a day not paving. Great. And uh, simultaneously- um, I just want to, excuse me for a minute. Um, Director Williams had her hand up. So I thought she might want to answer a question too. Is that- Yes, Director thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, also, I did want to add in there that just because the funds have been allocated um, we have a list, and I think that it's the time that we start speaking realistic to some of these things that we're seeing. Um, Kent does an amazing job of forecasting out of next year or this year, six months, the end of the month, but realistically, those things are not happening and so it's time that we just start having those realistic conversations. Yes, funds have been allocated. Yes, we have a list. But can, if you can explain the paving situation just for last year in itself, you know, we went through our paver being in the shop for most yep. of paving season. Yep. That set us back. <laughs> yep. And then on top of that, we were paving from years before on a list. So I think if we speak realistically to the list that we have of projects and when we will get to them and the crews that we have that are doing this work, I think, and then I'm going to be quiet. I have one more point. You don't have to be quiet. We're here to hear what you have to say. Please don't be quiet, okay? Okay. <laughs> and then the reason that we have um, additional paving equipment in this St. Louis Works budget is so that we can anticipate if a paver breaks down, we have another paver, as well as anticipating if we get another paving crew altogether that can do some of this paving as well. But I would like for Kent to speak to just this past year, the amount of paving that we did and just the realistic viewpoint of the paving uh, for the streets department. Yep. 
So the good thing, I guess, is <laughs> we don't, we, well, because I know people have committed St. Louis Works to paving, but it has not made it on our list because the budget hasn't been approved. So uh, once this is approved, I get to go through that and add things to our list. Since we paved very late, uh, we start well, we started paving very late uh, in 2022 because we didn't have any equipment. It was all in the shop till middle of September, which we usually get in March or April. Uh, that foot is way behind. But as uh, Alderman Vicaro can tell you, I was still paving and not picking up leaves because <laughs> I had half to two thirds of our department were out paving. Uh, which is kind of the double-edged sword we live with now. It's uh, We can focus on one thing and do a pretty decent job on it, but then we lose other things. Uh, but with that being said, the, the list currently does not have much on it, but once I start pulling the St. Louis work stuff over the last two years that Alderman have committed funds to, I'm not sure what that list looks like currently. Uh, the big equipment thing is, and this budget here, uh, the 514-5539 line includes another paver. Uh, so I, I have sorry, a problem. It includes another what? Uh, paving machine. Okay, great. So, so the problem I have is I have a fairly new paver. I think it's a 2018 or 2019. But if I'm doing a street like Kings Highway and I have 15 or 20 contractor trucks out there that each one holds 30 ton, 25 to 30 ton of asphalt. These days, that's asphalt's $80 a ton. So if that paper breaks down in the middle of the day, and that's kind of why we waited till September because I did not have a backup paper. And I have a backup paper now, but it's about 15, 20 years old. Uh, so I'm not sure what the math on that is. 20 trucks by 25 tons per truck at $80 a ton. If my paver goes down, we get stuck with that bill whether we put that asphalt down or not because it's sitting on the street waiting for our machine. And if our machine ends up being broke down all day, uh, then we're out that money. So I try to avoid that situation <laughs> because it ends up being very costly to the city. Uh, and that's why a new paver is in this budget. And the good thing about pavers are, or most of those are kind of stock and they're in stock. There's nothing too fancy about pavers in general. So, so once this money's in place, we can get it bid and, and would probably have it close to June or July. Uh, we would still start paving sooner than that. Uh, uh, Bradley or BPS is actually equipment services actually has a couple new rollers in their budget that, that we're working on getting those at this time. So equipment wise, we should be good. But once again, it does come down. Some of us, some of you remember, oh, probably pre 2010, where we always, not always, but for a half dozen, dozen years there. We had two paving crews, yes, two milling crews. Did a great job. And, and we were everywhere all the time. Right. Uh, back then we had 170, 175 employees. Uh, on a good Can day. Can you say how long now, ago that was again? I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just missed that. How long ago you said? Uh, I believe it was pre-2010. Uh, so the economic issues of 2008, 2009, uh, before that, we had pretty much 165, 170 guys. We also had some per, per performance employees, uh, which I think was 15 or 20. So we were almost 200 people there. And in a paving crew, by the time you put a, the miller out in front of it, which is the machine that tears up the old pavement, uh, then we have another crew that comes in behind that to do a little clean off and clean up around manholes. And by the time you had a paving crew, you're talking almost 50, between 50 and 60 people in order to be doing it efficiently. And, and now we're lucky to have 100, 105 people employed and that doesn't count somebody that's on vacation, family medical leave, sick, what have you today. Uh, on an average day around here, we run about 80, 
five, maybe 90 people on a good day. So if you wait, pay, wait, wait, wait. Uh, excuse I'm, me, um, Alderman Swanson was still, are you is still recognized? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I appreciate these answers. I, with talking about a list of projects that are upcoming, are you, is that list becoming something that looks like a plan for the next few years and something that will help set and guide expectations of our constituents? Honestly, I think the ARPA paving by itself is uh, going to keep us very busy for the next two years, but that also depends on when those streets become available to me. As far as if there's traffic coming being installed, it's got to be installed first. If there's wheelchair ramps that need to be installed, those have to be installed first. Uh, so I kind of anticipate this year more than likely would be filling in uh, with Ward Cap, Ward St. Louis Works until those are made available to me. Uh, because as soon as a good fellow at Kings Highway, a union becomes available, I need to be on top of it as soon as it becomes available so we can get that money spent since there's a deadline on it. Um, I, get, I get it. I think it's interesting because we funded paving first, which means the paving funds have sat there for almost a year. And we should have, it sounds to me like you're saying we should have funded traffic calming first. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I am a... <laughs> always interesting like the order things happen and causing different delays so okay I think a lot of people would really appreciate seeing the timeline um and and I don't know how BPS and streets works together to to lay out that timeline of what people can expect and I think at the end of the day we all know all of these funds have to be spent by December of 2026 uh and you know the word capital and St. Louis works funds should also be spent at the same time but they don't expire. And so, you know, I, I just wanna be thoughtful about using and spending every single dollar of this ARPA funds that our community so badly need. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll yield back. I know a lot of my colleagues have questions. Thank you for taking so much of uh, your time today. Okay. Um, uh, um, Mr. Bradley has his hand up, and then it's Alderman Vaccaro because Mr. Bradley is here to answer our questions. Did you have some more to add to anything the director or the commissioner has said? Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. So I um, just want to make a few comments about just a couple of items. So there's always been a comment, and I heard it from the director and the commissioner, and they're spot on that the paver was tied up until the fall, and I just want to address that because I think it's important that everybody on the call understands that every vendor as well as the city are having problems hiring mechanics, okay? And so the paver was turned in last winter and it sat there because of lack of people at a vendor uh, to do the work on it. Nothing internally, everybody here did their job, but once it got to the vendor, it sat until they could actually get to it. So that's point number one. Second point is along those lines at equipment services where I have about 120 employees, I currently have 50, five, zero vacancies. We can't hire people for a number of reasons, which obviously we're not gonna get into in this forum here, but I want you to know that we try hard every day to figure out how to get enough people to fix these items to keep them running, okay? Uh, this St. Louis works, so you know, it funds five mechanic positions, which take care of the paver, the miller, the rollers, and all these things that Kent referred to uh, that break down, and they do break down very early because it's very uh, easily because it's very specialized equipment. And so, like he said, while he has trucks lined up, he needs a backup paver, and we've had multiple times that both pavers are broken. And we have to have people come out and work with him and his staff to try to get them up and going so we don't lose a lot of um, money and materials there. We have the street department pave rather than hire contractors, both on, on, on all three, St. Louis Works, on Ward Capital, and on the ARPA funds, because 
what you get is you get the labor and equipment at, at no cost because it's already hired by the city. Where if we went out and we hired a contractor, all these costs would be at least doubled, if not more, because you now have to pay them for all their equipment and labor and overhead to do it. So being patient and working with streets is a major cost savings to us. We get a lot more bang for the buck out of it. And I'll commend uh, commissioner and director on the job they do there because they really do an outstanding job with the short staff they have. Finally, um, I'll talk about the traffic calming just a little bit. So uh, Alder Woman Schweitzer mentioned the bit about how these things were prioritized and they were out of order and maybe should have been traffic calming backwards. So there's always been conversations about traffic calming. Um, previous to now, it has been done on a ward basis because there's not sufficient funding to do this. So the part of the capital, which had been happening for over the last two years, which myself and uh, Director Payne sat in a number of citizen advisory board meetings over the last couple summers, um, we put paving in because obviously paving is a major concern in the city. Where the street calming came in and came in late into the game is, is there is a grant opportunity that came out from the federal government as part of the Build Back America plan. And it has to do with the safety uh, action uh, plan and safe streets and zero tolerance and all these items. That came out late late the nofo came out late last summer and so as a result there was a conversation with us after the paving in the mayor's office and streets and everybody to say how do we align ourselves to set ourselves up in order to be able to get more grants going forward that takes an action plan and it takes implementation of a citywide program which is um, all part of the conversation that are happening in board bill 120 now so yes late to the dance but what we we did because of the way they came out was we said the pavers are down anyway we cannot pave the streets right now so let's tie the street coming in so we don't pave the street and then go back and have to tear it back up again which everybody here would agree i hope that that is always negative reflection on all of us and looks bad. And then while we were at it, we also went the next step and said, while we're doing all that, let's make sure that we also incorporate ADA improvements, which are ramps and sidewalks and all the things that are ADA transition plan, which we've diligently been working on tie together as well. So it appears that we're delaying things. What we're trying to do is get them all tied together with a bow around them and do them at the same time. Uh, we do have consultants on board, but as you're all aware, Board Bill 120, even though it has passed out of committee, has not passed the full board yet. So once that happens, we will finish the execution of the contracts with the consultants, and then we will get into this design of um, those major corridors for street calming, and we will also begin the citywide mobility plan, which is part of that board bill as well. So it, it's coming together but it's a lot of moving parts. So I hope that answers some of the questions a little bit better. Okay, um, Alderman Vicar, I wanna say one thing. I like what your whole plan, uh, Mr. Bradley, I don't like that you didn't tell us because a lot of us were sitting around waiting. And so that's the part that whoever made that decision, that was a bad decision. Um, I should have known as a, a chair of streets, uh, 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 Alder Woman Boyd is the chair of Ways and Means. There should have been a lot of people on this on, on this uh, particular Zoom um, uh, conference or meeting that should have had some kind of, hey, this is what we're doing. This is why it's being held up. So all this finger pointing that came from the mayor's office maybe would have been, uh, it was, was unnecessary and was untrue. And so a little communications when the right hand knows what the left hand is doing makes it a lot better, okay? Um, Alderman Vaccaro. Mine, mine's going to be simple and short. Kent are rich. They got $200,000 in sidewalks and $50,000 in speed humps. And what I keep being told is, gee, it's the comptroller's office holding all this up. 
I'd like to really know what's going on. Why? Because you guys don't do the sidewalks. Why hasn't that contract gone out or has it gone out and I'm unaware of it? What what's going on? I mean, it's 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 just this side of ridiculous because we can't say it's a broken equipment. We can't say it's lack of help. It is dysfunction somewhere. Where is this dysfunction? Why my sidewalks are not getting done? Two hundred thousand dollars we decided. We're going to knock out every sidewalk. So we put everything in the sidewalks, handful in the speed humps. No broken equipment. What's the story? Can anybody tell me? I'd be glad to take that one. So as I mentioned, you Alderman, the last time you asked about it, about two weeks ago when I was in this committee, that the way it works is we send the transfers. Once the transfers get approved, they go to the comptroller's office. The comptroller issues a PO. Once a PO is issued, we can issue the notice to proceed to the contractor. We have a list of, of POs that we're waiting on. We ask on a weekly basis, but as I respectfully said the last time, you know, I have to be very careful about pushing at the comptroller's office. They don't report to me. And so I can only do with what they provide to us. So as soon I, I, as we get that, we will move on them. I want you to send me a list of all these purchase orders because I will be on the news this week reading them off because there has to be some accountability because I'm probably not the only one that are waiting for a lot of work to be done. So if you're telling me that the comptroller's office is holding everything up and that's what you're telling me, I'd like to know how many projects throughout the city. So I'll take all, not just mine, I'd like a list of every, and I would like it today, of every purchase order that's being held up because I'm going to confront the comptroller's office and I'm going to take it to the news because this is this side of ridiculous and we can't blame it on anything other than dysfunction. Have, have you called the comptroller's office and inquired about these or you just send them over and say a prayer? My staff talks with them weekly, Alderman. So what has your staff said? They asked them when we can anticipate a PO. And what did they say? They say they're working on it. And this has been going on for a whole, like, budget season. I mean, th this is, so you're telling me that you're, you know what, just send me all the POs. I really think that there's this great dysfunction going on and we can't blame paving or anything else. I'd like the POs this afternoon. Chairwoman, uh, do you want the whole committee to get a copy of these or is this just my thing? If you can get them, send them to me and I'll give them to everybody. Um, if he can get them and can you get them this afternoon, what he's requesting? Yes, ma'am. He should okay, have his computer. I understand, um, but I like to ask questions, not assume. So, okay, if you give them to me, I'll, as soon as you hear them to me, I'm going to send them to the committee. Yeah, I'd, I'd, like, I'd like the news media to know how many, we're not even talking about streets here, how many sidewalks and things that could be being done are not being done. And, you know, what's funny, you could sit back and, and, and say, well, you know, we're kind of whatever. But it's all of the older people that are running for election, all of those who are not running that said, you're on this list, we're going to take care of this. And these people call and we go, <laughs> who knows? No, this time I'm going to put the finger where it belongs. I'm going to put it right in the eye of the people it belongs on. It's going to have to go to whoever. I don't care who or what, but this roadblock needs to be unblocked. And I'm just, I'm just tired of all the, 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 well, you know, I sent it to this guy who said, well, we're waiting for that. If, if you, if you depended on it, I'm sure it would be done. Anyway, I'll be anxious to see that. And I will be getting it to the media and I will make this more about let's unblock this. However we unblock it. Thanks. 
Alderwoman uh, Howard. Yes, I. Uh, it looks like what we have here is a failure to communicate, and uh, it's it just it's just sad, just sad. Um, how many miles of street do we have that is, if if they were all paved? Um, I guess that's a Kent question. Yep, we have about eleven hundred linear miles of streets total in the city. That's all. It's quite a bit. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, I when you figure all the side streets, it seems like it would be more. But anyway, eleven hundred linear miles. Okay, um, if if we were, you know, to be back on the regular schedule as was going on, and and I know when I first came up into office, I think up until say fifteen or so. Things got done regularly. I, you know, we'd have our meeting and you'd say, here's the streets need to be paved. And I said, what about this one? We just did that one, you know, and it was, it was, it, it went well. If we were back, how much, how many could you do um, each year? Oh, give me two seconds. Uh, typically we'll do a thousand ton a day. A thousand ton is... Oh, I'd say that's about a half mile a day, uh, depending on the season. Let's say we had six months, you get about 20 work days in a month. So it's about 30 32 miles somewhere in there a year okay okay um mr bradley touched on this about you know contracting some of this work out it would cost us probably double is that what you we expect uh last time this goes back to when ARPA funding of 08, 09, 10, whatever year that was, it was right at three times the cost of, of what we were paying for material only. Uh, wow. I think at that time we were around five fifty six dollars a square yard and contractors were around $17.50, $18. And then I guess you have to deal with the pushback from employees that some of those employees may be making more money than our employees? Is uh, that we didn't have an issue with it back then. Uh, and typically, you know, our employees are, are full-time. They have insurance. They have all that. Uh, a lot of these private paving companies don't have yeah. that. And yeah. they may only work six months out of the year. So. And they're, yeah, day-to-day, -day, you know. Okay. I just was wondering if that what came into play. Um, so we, you are down about what, 30% employees? Oh, ballpark 40. 40%? 100 out of 157 is what we have on staff. Is, and I guess this is a Nancy Cross and she's left us, but uh, is anything being done to like do a major recruitment? Or is that Miss Williams can answer that? Or I don't know who would be best to answer that. So yes, we are currently uh, working. We have currently, we have signs up. Uh, we do fairs. If um, we're working with uh, Slate as they have job fairs, we go and talk about different uh, positions in the streets department. If you pass 1900 Hampton, you see big signs out front to say, you know, we'll help you fill out the application. We'll train you. We have all of those things. Um, currently, I am working with uh, the director of personnel to figure out the $3,000 signing bonus that we have for refuse employees, drivers of refuse. If I can extend that over to the streets department as a whole for some of these different positions that we're just having a problem filling. So the, those are all the things that we're doing. You know, we'll get a list, we call, they don't show up. 
even for the interview. <laughs> so it's it's hard to just get people in the door. So just trying to identify how do we redevelop that pipeline if it's from high school students, you know, whatever it is to get uh, these public servants in the door. That's what we're trying to figure out now. But we are, you know, we have the signs up, we're doing fairs, we're doing all of that. I, I like any other industry, it's hard to hire people. Is there, uh, and I, this is probably a personnel question. Does anybody know what the biggest stumbling block is? Is it because of residency? Is it because of the salary? Or, or we just don't know? I, I would say it's a combination of both of the two things that you just said, um, as well as uh, people just don't want to work, you know, and I yeah. even talked to the personnel director about maybe if I look at, you know, younger generation, they're not tied down to 40 hours, they're not tied down to um, uh, benefits labor. and insurance and all of that. So are there different options that we can uh, present to um, people that we want to get in the door, as well as, you know, during the interview process, can we hire them on the spot instead of allowing them to go through personnel and, uh, you know, the personnel process, and that takes time. And some of these students are, are people, they want to be hired right then. Right. Okay. You know, and then by the time we call them in six weeks, they're like, yeah, I'm not interested in working anymore. So I think if we can hire right on the spot, get people in the door, we put them on a probationary period, and then that will allow them, if they don't work out, at least we got six good months of work. But in some cases, I'm hoping that they will work out, and then we can keep them in that process. So we're just trying to figure out that breakdown. The guys are helping them fill out applications. When we go to these fairs, it's just not, they're just not showing up and sticking. It's a sign of the times, I guess. And some people prefer to live in mom's basement. And <laughs> live, life like, live, like, live life like that. <laughs> so. I think Mr. Flakes had an answer also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have one more point to add. Uh, I mean, this is why we've started taking applicants in our door here at streets uh, or a trailer door, whatever you want to call it, uh, is to help these applicants actually apply. Uh, about six months ago, uh, personnel had, uh, I believe it was 139 or 140 applicants for utility worker, which is essentially labor position. Uh, pretty much all that's required is a driver's license but there was one person out of the 140 that had actually had a driver's license <laughs> and, and had actually supplied a background check. Those two things out, out of 139 or 140 applicants was provided by one employee or one applicant. And, and I think, and uh, director and myself, personnel and myself, we've discussed this a lot those are the guys or the employees or the applicants we have to reach out to. And I don't know, maybe, maybe they actually have a driver's license. They just didn't write the number down on the application. I don't know. Uh, maybe they didn't know to get a background check. I don't know what the answer is. Until you can reach out to those individuals. I mean, 140 individuals to come in the door here between us, parks, refuge, everywhere else. That, that's a significant dent mm -hmm. in our shortage. But if we're not chasing those people down, and, and we also have to be able to do it in a timely fashion, uh, we can't be receiving the application six months down the road because anybody worth their weight has already been picked up five okay. times in six months. Yeah. Um, yeah, I appreciate your looking into trying to expedite the process as much as possible because that is, I understand, you know, uh, as former personnel being the public employees chair, it's the, the process is part of the problem, just waiting around, you know, people don't want to wait six months. You know, if they're looking for, if they're in the market for a job, they want a job now and they want a paycheck. So, okay, well, thank you so much. That's all I've got. Okay. Uh, Alderman Boyd. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to uh, ask a question. 
before uh, uh, St. Louis City got local control, didn't we have two maintenance departments? We had two departments that were repairing, we like police and fire, and then we had the city maintenance too. But now we're down to one, and our one maintenance department has everybody's. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. So the uh, police department during local control, um, I took over their facilities maintenance group as well as their fleet services. And those were separate uh, far since 20, I believe the local control was 2013. They were separately budgeted. Uh, last year was the first year they combined the budgets together. But we still have the total number of people from both groups together. So for example, the police vehicles, uh, we still have four maintenance shops. And one of those is the Laclede, which is the police public safety garage. And we still have the uh, all the facilities folks who maintain all the police stations and headquarters as well. So you are correct. Okay. And so... Uh... And then to me, it's, it just seems like it holds you all up because you don't have it, but you're saying that you still have the number of staff. But in your in this uh, bill, you're asking for maintenance people, correct? It you is still actually, need maintenance staff. Yes, ma'am. It is actually the funding for those maintenance staff. So when we do our budgets, as you all may recall, we uh, bill 1010 for most everything. But there are uh, other um, charge accounts that we bill off to besides 1010. And this is one of those funding sources that is an off billing for personnel, for uh, maintenance staff. Okay. It's, and so uh, I guess my question to say that, is that slowing down the process? Because I heard Kent said that they had to send out and it took longer than anticipated. So does that have an impact on us getting our equipment fixed or repaired or serviced? So I would say this to you, that we still had the mechanics on staff. They were paid far out of 1010, which is our standard budget. But at the end of the day, the funding is needed because if there's not funding in 1010, then we can't fund those positions. We have struggled along uh, and cut other items uh, to do that. But again, this provides parts and equipment uh, for the millers, the pavers, the rollers, all these type of things. So my estimation, and Kent, correct me if you think I'm wrong, is that we would maintain them better if we had sufficient funding in order to do the normal PMs and all the things that we normally have to do uh, when the funding source is there. No, that's 100% correct, Rich. Thank you. Okay. And so, and all right. And then the other thing, the two most dangerous words, I say this every meeting that I sit on, the two most dangerous words in this city is accountability and communication because it never happens. It's, it's, and as Alderman Bacoro said, it's somebody else's fault, it's somebody else's fault. And then communication. And I think, I don't know if people are used to working in a silo, but I think it hurts us as a city because a lot of times things could be prevented if people just said something and then we as all the people would know what to do and how we could fight for you. But right now we didn't know because we were in the dark. And so my other thing is the personnel, because what I'm hearing is it's the process of people filling out application and then the turnaround time. So has that improved? since we have the new personnel director or is it the same or you know how is that working for you guys because I keep telling people we're in a microwave generation so if people put in an application today and everybody agrees they're not going to wait for next week for you to call them they're waiting for you to interview them give them their information and get them going. So have we improved our process to help that turnaround for you all? So from my perspective, Alderwoman, I would say from what I am seeing with Director Gray, that it is leaps and bounds in the direction to help us. And I believe that uh, it is going to do that 
in time. I think it's she's still pretty new, but I believe she's working very hard. Uh, Director Williams and I heard her speak at cabinet about helping us. I think a big thing, right, like you said, is communication. She's communicating with us and her department is. They're helping us. They're offering to help us. But I think the other part of it is I, I heard a commentary earlier about, you know, salaries and the residency uh, requirements and all those type of things. And I think some of those things are going to have to be adjusted as well. It can't just all be the director of personnel, even though she is trying. I think we still need to have, you know, a package that people want to uh, go for and work for us. And for example, in my engineering staff here, when I look at them and I hire them and they could go to any consultant or contractor in town and make $20,000 or more a year starting out of school with a $5,000 signing bonus, you can imagine where they're going. And so we fight this battle continuously across the board, whether it's my staff, streets, parks, water, everybody, because we're behind the curve on paying competitive salaries. And then you add the residency requirement to it. And I think we all love this city. I mean, I've lived here my entire life from the day I was born, but I would say that, you know, today for some of these lower paying positions, some of the people may be more interested in living in, you know, a Jefferson County or a St. Charles County or Illinois or somewhere maybe where they might be able to live a little bit cheaper. And I'm I'm not saying that from fact, I'm just saying it from what, what I have heard from people that we've interviewed, that the qualified candidates are there, but they're not in the city, and we're not paying the salary to attract them, or giving the benefits to attract them. So I think she's doing better. Uh, time will tell, obviously. Okay. And then the last thing, now, are we asking our utility workers to have CDL licenses also? When they come in, all we ask for is a driver's license. We will train them and get them a CDL. So we will train people to get CDL license. Yep. Uh, we train probably around 100 people a year citywide out of, out of the street division only. Uh, we train guys, employees from parks, water, anybody that comes in that wants a CDL, most of them come through our training facility over here. Uh, the problem recently with that is once you get a CDL, you're worth about $35, $40 an hour, and we're not paying that. So they'll get their training here, and then they jump ship the next day, literally the next day. Because I do know Randy was trying to push for the CDL, but then we see and that's backfiring on us as a city because we're training them, and then we lose them. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you all. What do we pay for CDL? What do we pay people who have a CDL? <laughs> it's a very good question. Uh, with the way the pay plan was set up a couple of years ago when everybody went to $15 an hour, uh, whether you are a street sweeper driver or uh, an operator of a shovel, you're making the exact same rate of pay. And that is, I can go look uh, it up. <laughs> it's well, not a secret. I mean, it, they just it just changed by what one and a half percent, but it was fifteen dollars an hour. So I do ten zero point one five. Oops. Well, fifteen. I believe it's fifteen twenty three, but I can tell you here in just a second. Okay, that's close enough. It doesn't have to be exactly. <laughs> so fifteen to sixteen dollars an hour versus. $35 an hour is what we're pretty much looking at, huh? That's correct. And so if we get start paying people $35 an hour, you think that that would help decrease the large amount of people that we need to uh, recruit now? Because we'd have people uh, making scale. So right now we just got to compete is what you're telling us, right? We have to compete at least, if not with residency, at least we got to compete with money. And, and honestly, I don't think you got to go, I mean, because right now everybody's hiring at crazy salaries. I mean, it's salaries none of us have ever seen before. Okay. Uh, I talked to a lot of people. Uh, 
that have interest in coming coming to work for the city. Most of them actually told me if they could get in with a full time job at the city, nineteen twenty dollars with pension with benefits, etc. They're they're sold. Uh, okay. But they're not Excuse sold. Me. Oh, and, woman, boy, did you still have questions? I didn't mean to. Your hand is still up. Can you let it down, please? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, but but they're not going to come work for for fifteen fifty, which is you know what they can make at McDonald's or wherever most. That these employees don't want to go work at McDonald's anyway because, well, McDonald's is short staffed too. And uh, every time I go there, they're working their butts off. So, <laughs> uh, so I think, you know, a lot of our employees here, you know, they have the comfort of sitting in a street sweeper, doing a route. You know, we're, we're not asking them to do anything crazy. If you're, if you're filling potholes, you know, you, you get in the truck and you drive 15, 20 minutes to your first pothole, you fill it up and go to your second, your third, your 10th, your 15th pothole. So, so the, what we're asking of employees is a little different than, you know, what you'd have in a factory or somewhere else. So I think a lot of people understand that, but I, I think if you are in the $20 range, I think you, at least on the CDL side, you start seeing a lot of people change their minds about the city. Um, okay. and, I, and I did look up that dollar amount. It's uh, okay. it's fifteen fifty an hour for an HEO one or an HEO two, which is a uh, dump truck driver, street sweeper driver. Refuse is a little higher than that because they got a little incentive. I think they're seventeen something uh, when they were trying to get refuse drivers are a year year and a half ago they, they upped them a little bit but but my guys coming in to operate a shovel or to have a cdl a which is the higher cdl in order to operate a street sweeper uh they're getting paid the same at 1550. okay so um I want to meet after we go down. I would like to meet with you all. The election is in March the 6th. I would like to meet with you, Mr. Flakes, maybe the director and, and, and director of uh, Bradley and director Williams about if we can kind of put something together before sign and die that we can, that most aldermen could kind of sign on about how we get everybody's projects done and how we lock it in or what would be the best way to do that, okay? Um, and we can, I can write something up so that um, may not be law, but it'll be our intentions in some kind of resolution saying it is the intention of the Board of Aldermen that this is what happens and that these things didn't get done because we had, I mean, and we keep forgetting we've been in a pandemic and everything else, you know, we kind of taken that uh, for granted. And so um, we didn't have a couple of several years of a budget. Now we're back on track and we're actually doing the 2023. That is good. Um, and so um, if we could sit down and lock in and then have each alderman be able to be appraised of what kind of monies they have, and then they could put it into some kind of holistic package or resolution before we come back for sign and die, we could put something, do a resolution that I think we would get a, a, a unanimous consent from all the aldermen that it'd be done that way. So um, after March 6th, I'd like to meet with you all if at all possible. Okay, is that all right? Perfect. Okay. Um, and Mr. Bradley, you and I are going to have a conversation and the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what's his name that's down in, uh, that helps the disabled about my curbs. I am not going to hear another thing about my curbs. We're going to get my curbs done because I got told off the other day, which they should be telling me off because the, uh, the rebarb is coming out all over the place. We got uh, in Penrose, they didn't do, I live in an older neighborhood, so they used a lot of limestone or what uh, granite in my neighborhood. But in the Penrose neighborhood, they used concrete and a lot of that is wasting away and people don't understand how important curbs are just all over. So I will also be trying to reach out to you about my list of curbs that I started talking to you about in 2013 and it's about uh, 14 and here it is almost nine years later. We, we I intend to get my curves done. Um, so is there anybody that has a question or a uh, comment for, for the three people that are still here regarding what is going on with 
uh, uh, or capital, public works, whatever, uh, St. Louis works budget or anything like that? Anyone at all? And so, Mr. Bradley, you're going to get me what uh, Alderman from the 23rd requested today sometimes or first yes, thing tomorrow. Okay, and then I'm going to send it to um, to the committee so they can go over it. Um, anybody else have any questions? Okay, then um, I'll, I'll, I'll do one. Thank you. I just put a few questions uh, written in the chat that I asked while I was talking about getting a list of all the streets that are on the, the list to be repaved and how they'll be funded and a timeline of that work and how much of that work is being done by the city versus contractors. Okay. I just saw that and uh, was reading through it as uh, she put her hand up. So. Thank you. Um, so let me ask this. This is going to be a hard question. I know you say it costs double, triple to do the streets. When I got, I got all my streets in when it was the 20th Ward, but seven streets paved throughout the whole war. Because every year I would put a lot of money into paving and every year they would get it done, you know. It used to be, that was the thing you didn't have to worry about. You worried about 50-50 sidewalk, but you didn't worry about paving. You guys did a fantastic job. So I hear now why, because you have a lot less employees, but I know you did a great job back in the 90s and early 2000s, okay? And so um, do we dare have to just look at that? Maybe we're going to have to pay more to get it done and caught up because, and I know people don't like to say that, but I'm telling you, not only do I hear it in my ward, because they see that name chair of streets, I hear it all across the city. I have to defend myself and say, I'm the chair of the, the uh, Board of Alderman streets. I am not the chair of the streets that decide. So I get all kind of emails where people are mad and upset and feel like their cars are being harmed, hubcaps, tires, and things like that. At what point do we say, maybe we still have to pay more and get an outside source. So that's that's the ultimate plan. Right now, the funds that we are putting in these budgets to do street paving, it's no way that we will be able to even be competitive dollar amount to go out for bid for some of this work. So until we allocate more funding for outside bid work for asphalt, we will continuously have to do it internally because the prices that we have will not, the, the funds that we have, we would never be able to do it outside work. So I, how many years behind are we? Two, three, four, what? Say that one more time. I, how said, many years are we behind? So Kent, you can, I think last year or this starting in September, we was able to catch up one year, but you can tell exactly what that list looks like. Yeah, currently I only have, uh, well, prior to this board bill here, uh, I only have seven remaining streets from the previous years on our list currently. I don't, I don't know what this is going to look like once uh, this budget passes and, and everything that aldermen have committed to, to pave out of St. Louis Works. I'm not sure what that's going to look like. Typically, a lot of aldermen do use their St. Louis works for 50-50, though. Uh, so it may not be that many streets. And, and to kind of follow up on how we got here, uh, once again, it goes back to 2008, 2009. Uh, after that, the aldermen's budgets were, were cut significantly, uh, almost half, uh, the exact same time. Asphalt cost doubled. Uh, now, as of about a year ago, asphalt has tripled from where it was in 2008, 2000, or prior to the issues in 2008, 2009. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that the aldermen on here realize that their budget has not tripled. And, and that's kind of what has led us down this path. Uh, our, our streets now, uh, yeah, I've been here 20, well, it'll be 23 years in May. Uh, just, just with that dollar amount, uh, our, our, and the reasoning behind that dollar amount is, I mean, our streets are probably the worst, I, I guarantee, almost guaranteed they're the worst that I've seen in 23 years. 
Uh, right. I don't know what they would look like in 80 or 90, but I can say what they looked like in 2000 when I moved here. Right. Uh, we used to have probably 90 to 95% of our streets, if you rated them, would be an acceptable, if not better shape. Uh, my guess now would be that number would be somewhere around 80% of our streets are in acceptable shape. Okay, so as we talk about planning, how do we also plan for utilities expanding, installing conduit, wire, and all of that? So is there something, I, since we don't, the left and right hand don't talk inside the city, explain how that will work outside the city uh, with the uh, utility companies. One of the reasons I, you haven't heard me even ask for, I want to do curbing because uh, right now they're all over in all parts of my ward tearing the streets up so it doesn't make any sense to me i want the curbs okay we'll get the paving I, that's why i asked you about just maybe milling or something like that because well, as soon as you pave if you pave union and they come back and tear it up i'm going to be mad yeah. and it's going to be a giant waste of money so alderman Schweitzer and myself have talked about this quite a bit over the last six months uh the biggest issue the city has is is we sit down with most every alderman in the spring or early summer, we're just, we just decide what we're going to pave that year. Not five years from now, but that year. Uh, once I get that list, then I provide it to all the utilities, uh, Spire, Ameren, uh, ATT, and uh, a few others, Water Department, MSD, and I look to see if they have any conflicts where they're actually planning on putting in new mains, new systems of, of any type. Uh, currently on my list of streets that need paved, I have uh, several of them that say old Spire. Uh, once I figure out Spire is working there or going to be working there, I usually reach out to the alderman or older woman and say, hey, you can leave this money here, you can spend it elsewhere because Spire is going to be there in the next two years. Uh, once that's completed, then we'll go in and, and pave it. Uh, but that's kind of the problem. Uh, we're one of the only cities that I'm aware of that does not have a five or 10 year paving plan. Uh, we, we, Like I said, we, we sit down in April or May, typically, and we decide what we're going to pave the next day. Uh, we really need to get to a point where we can say this is what we're paving over the next five years, be able to give utilities a year or two head start to go in and tear up everything that they can dream of tearing up. And then at the end of that, come in and hopefully all the work is done, whether it be, it could be all the utilities. And once they're done, they know they had a window, they know we plan on paving the street in 2027. So they're done, we come in 2027, we put it back brand new. The only issue you have after that would be some sort of emergency work where you have a gas leak or a sewer uh, collapse or something like that, uh, which I think we can all understand that those happen. Uh, still not great if I just paved the street yesterday, but I mean, that's kind of the goal here. I'm not sure how we get to that, but at some point we have to be able to look out more than six months on what we're going to pave. Uh, we need to be able to figure out how to get at least a five-year plan citywide and, and be able to do something with that. Okay, what about the building division? So I requested, there are about 15, 13, 12, 13 properties on Union that need to be demolished. So I asked LRA and the building division if they weren't gonna demolish them all at the same time, if they at least, if they had could uh, uh, let me know if they were gonna demolish those buildings, we could get the water company to come out and destroy the taps and the ga gas company. And that way, wouldn't that make it so that you could go ahead and pave and not have to worry about the building division? I, I, and I mean the water department or gas people coming out and cutting a hole back in it. I'm glad you brought that up. That is one group of people I've never, I've talked to them, but I've ne they're not on my list of <laughs> People to talk to. So I'm going to write that one down. <laughs> That'll be a $50 charge, okay? <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so, I, but I do, because I hate it when I, I, in the past, I paved all my streets, and then the building division would come out there, well, not the building division, but the water or the gas company, and there they cut that, and I wanted the demolition, but I was always mad because they messed up my nicely paved street. So, we're going to try to communicate with them, maybe, also? Absolutely. Okay. And would it help if they knew they were going to tear some buildings down and if they just went ahead and did early um, uh, tapping and taking the water and gas out? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we, we've had several of those where we pave a street six months, a year later, they come in, demo a building that we knew was going to get demoed. Right. And they had the boards on it. Pretty right. sure it's going to get demoed. But uh, yeah, it's one group I. I talk to you all the time, but I've never thought about talking to them before paving. I'm married to a, well, he says he's a planner. Our joke, my joke in our house, since he talks about lawyers, is I call them planters, but I am married to a planner. So he always says you have to do these things. Okay. Um, and also, um, aren't the utilities supposed to put these streets back to as near as that they can find them as possible? Because I don't find that to happen. They either just throw some um, pavement in there and it sinks in. Um, they don't seem to be doing what I thought they were supposed to do. So tell me what your understanding of when they do have to work on a street, what is it supposed to look like once they're finished? And that includes main uh, manhole covers also. Now, you know that uh, whenever they complete a job, it's supposed to be restored uh, to city spec. Uh, the only thing that we've changed over the last few years it, we used to request them concrete it uh, two inches below grade and then when we would come back assuming it was an asphalt street we would come back and put an asphalt topping on it so it would all kind of match uh with us being so short staffed over the last few years uh we've just told them to concrete it all the way to grade as long as they do a good job that's acceptable uh Two of the biggest problems are, I mean, if you have legitimate contractors, most of the legitimate contractors are actually doing the work correctly. Uh, we have several contractors out there that don't get permits that do work on a Saturday, Sunday. Uh, and then they end up failing six months later. Uh, we also have some good contractors that actually do that too, because you know the boss isn't always on the job site. And as soon as somebody turns their back on somebody, somebody's taking a shortcut. Right. So, and I, I will say everybody else, every other utility in the city essentially restores stuff the same way. Uh, Spire, by law, has to use a different rock than everybody else. Um, the problem with that rock is it's supposed to be compacted every six inches. So if you got a two feet deep hole, six inches of rock, Compact it, six inches of rock, compact it, six inches of rock, compact it, six inches of rock, compact it. Uh, once again, they have a lot of crews out there, and they are, my assumption is that they are not following their own guidelines on that. And we've had many, many, many discussions about their backfill and, uh, and their restoration. Okay. And, but since they do have to use a different rock, that, that is why you see them fail more than probably anyone else other than these fly-by-night contractors that, that dig a hole. I won't even say fly-by-night, non-permitted contractors <laughs> who, who dig a hole and just throw the same dirt back in the hole when they're done. Uh, that's all supposed to be rock with uh, eight to 10 inches of concrete on top. And, and I think we've all seen contractors just throw the dirt from their original excavation right back in the hole. Uh, they may even leave it like that forever uh, until either all of them are in NIS or a street inspector sees it and goes, why is there a big hole cut in the street filled full of dirt? Uh, which is absolutely wrong way to do it. But if people are sneaking in and, and doing non-permitted work, that's kind of what we end up with. So when they do permitted work and they and they do it three, what did you say, three inches below or three, how, how, how much below the surface do you have to do it? 
And uh, up to about three years ago, let, let's just say the beginning of COVID, uh, they were they were instructed to leave all of their work two inches below grade, so we could put a two inch asphalt topping on it in order to match the existing asphalt. Right. Uh, since then, we allow the contractor to bring either their eight or ten inches of concrete up to the the street surface. Okay. It's and so, but if, when they did have to do it the other way, did they then have to notify you that they had done it and tell you now you could come out and do this? Is that what happened? Uh, either way, uh, if they have a permit, they have to let us know that they're that they're backfilling. Uh, okay. They're backfilling. We'll come out and take a look at it, and then once they pour concrete, we'll come out and take a look at it. Uh, prior to, it was the same thing except we would create an internal asphalt ticket. So we would know to, we have to go out and asphalt this two foot by two foot by two inch deep hole. So it kind of eliminated the piece of paperwork and eliminated some work on our end, but the inspector should still be seeing these holes if they have a permit. All right. Okay, is there anyone else that has any questions? Did, um, and did each of you look at the chat to see if there was something? Um, Alderwoman Swasser asked several things and she put it in the chat. So I'd ask for uh, all three of you all to look to see if there's something that you can provide her um, that she put in the chat. Yeah, I certainly saw it. Yes, I saw it and Kent's gonna get her that information. Okay. All right. Anything else? Anything I, else? I have a question. Alderman? Um, if possible, um, would you all be willing to have job fairs? And I'm sure you all already do, but like in the inner neighborhoods, like with some of the boys and girls clubs where parents are generally dropping off, because uh, we got all of these, oh, I think we got seven rec centers, right? And of course, parents are dropping their kids off and a lot of parents are looking for work. A lot of parents know other parents that are looking for work as well. Um, would it, you know, be interesting to you all to see if we can set up, you know, multiple uh, job fairs at the places that we know for sure adults who have people to take care of will be that also speak to other adults who have people they need to take care of will be. Um, have you all ever had any job fairs at those locations? Yes. So we've had, we work, like I said, we work with Slate. Um, they're the ones that have been organizing the job fairs at the community centers, um, different <clears throat> locations where we know people may gather or like you said, drop their children off that are looking for employment. Uh, we have had them different times of day um, so that they can come to these job fairs and, and get um, you know, fill out applications. We have staff that are there to talk about the positions as well as help them complete the applications as well. But if you have some additional locations, um, you know, we can discuss that. Like I said, we typically go through Slate because they're the ones that do all the front end work of setting it up and identifying the location. And then we come in to talk about the streets department. But if you have other locations, please share and um, I will make sure that they're on the list. I do, um, I, I will make sure I share them. I think, uh, I mean, do we have to coordinate with some of the folks like Herbert Hoover Boys and Girls Club is not necessarily a part of the city's uh, departments, but they have a lot of people that come there, um, you know, and it's a kind of central location, folks that have come up in the city and not, you know, we don't really have a rec center close to us. As I would say the closest one is Woes uh, within the third ward, so. Um, you know, that, that few, few more locations, I'll send those out. Um, I do think that one of the reasons we are uh, and continually, continually having our, our problems with employees and people not wanting to sign up because historically, um, St. Louis haven't, hasn't really taken, like you all have said, a really, really uh, quick approach in hiring people who are qualified and folks don't have the time to wait when they're looking for a job. Um, so I do agree with, I believe this uh, what you said, uh, Ms. Williams, if we actually had uh, people being hired on the spot, I think that could be potentially something could be pretty cool for us to look into. 
also, um, you know, I throw this out here because uh, it's who knows where we'll be or who'll be here. Let's see. Hold on one second. All right, I'm sorry. Um, I also think, you know, something that just a suggestion, um, if you all, this, this could be pretty interesting. Uh, a lot of people are generally, you know, on bus stops or on bus routes. They're generally also going to and from places looking for jobs. People, you know, transient, uh, folks that are walking, biking. Uh, would you all be interested in possibly, say for instance, we had like a bus and we actually had a hiring bus where you could actually get hired by city services on the spot. And we actually drove around the city um, where we knew we had, you know, folks that would, uh, you know, maybe getting out of school uh, where you have uh, college kids. And this is an actual hiring bus um, where, you know, on certain days a week, we'll have certain folks uh, from different departments, you know, that could be there actually, you know, like we always, you know, we're always saying that we need to hit people where they are. People are in the community. so. Um, just once again, just throwing out that idea as well. Uh, and just the more conversations we have on how to be innovative about hiring folks, you know, the, uh, I think the more uh, you know, hits we'll eventually get. We got to hit, you know, we got to hit a million different ways. So, um, you know, I also have not seen any advertisement or heard advertisement much on the radio. Do we advertise on the radio at all? So that's, so I think the conversation we're having now is bigger than the individual departments here. You know, we mm -hmm. do within our RAM of what we can do, put the signs out front of our facilities, but this more holistic conversation of how we recruit is a personnel uh, conversation. And so I don't wanna speak for <laughs> personnel and how they recruit and, but I think they're all great ideas doing spots want me to do a spot, can't to do a spot, whoever it is, we're willing to do those. Um, you know, we just, that's just not in our wheelhouse. We just participate when they ask us to come. And luckily right, no, you're talking to the chair of public uh, employees at the Board of Aldermen, okay? So he could just right. call himself a hearing <laughs> and, <laughs> and ask all those questions. Asking. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, so the thought was, if I knew what what was happening, you know, kind of in detail, I can then ask uh, the new director and say, hey, what do you think about this or that? We had some conversation, take a look at it, you know, and then we can, you know, kind of put something around that. But yes, ma'am. Um, so no, I do agree, you, you know, you all don't have the, it's, it's not all on you, but it's just good to know, you know, what it is we are doing and what we can do and what you all would be interested in as well. Um, I do also have um, some questions about the encumbered funds piece, right? If we have right now, like I know I have uh, quite a few projects that uh, have just went out. I've signed the, the PDF documents for uh, you guys, and you guys have been pretty diligent about getting things out um, to bid, but it, the work a lot of times still takes a little bit of time to get done. So, you know, my thoughts would be before uh, that cutoff date, uh, what, what is it, April the 17th? Anybody know what the date is that the funds have to be encumbered? Oh, yes, ma'am. You talking about you talking about sign die? You want to know what the sign die date is? Yes, ma'am. Is that well? Okay. Would that be the date that the, these these projects that we're trying to fund right now would have to already have contracts on? Seventeenth April the seventeenth is sign die. That means April the eighteenth we start the new twenty three twenty four session. Okay. So mm -hmm. if you're trying to get it done before sign and die, where we can have had it uh, encumbered by this in this session, that would be it. Okay. Is, is there any way before sign and die, we can get um, all of the projects that that we push somehow over these last, over the next few weeks? Because I, I got a lot of individuals who would I like to just go ahead and help out with sidewalks. Um, you know, even though, you know, like we said, uh, we couldn't, you know, money here or there, but, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just, this is just the time. So, you know, with that being said, I don't want people, um, <clears throat> you know, I can help out with projects and then, you know, um, because they don't get those contracts signed in time or we sign the contracts and those funds don't get, uh, 
those projects don't get bid on. I just, I just want to make sure that the projects we put forth now have enough time to uh, have contracts on them. So I'll speak to that one again, Alderman. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, under my control, under BPS control, what we've always done in the past is projects that have noticed to proceed, which is, is a result of what Alderman Vaccaro was inquiring about, is an issued PO from the comptroller, which is a result of a transfer from ENA, then it gets locked into a contract. An encumbered fund, you can encumber funds for something, but that does not lock it in a contractual proceeding. But again, as I mentioned, the Board of Aldermen are the rule makers. So however you write those rules is what we will follow. We simply follow what you tell <clears throat> us to follow. So I would say the time to get executed contracts and out and back and notice to proceed, if you turn them all in today, is gonna to be very difficult. So what I would encourage and respectfully ask is you consider how you would write um, the ordinance that's gonna amend the ward capital ordinance to place it where you want it so that it cannot be taken away. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Thank you. And so we don't, so we talked about early Alderman that we are, we've passed the time to introduce new ordinances and board bills. So I talked about doing a resolution that we could all kind of, you know, um, that I believe most members of the board of Alderman would support and, and meet with uh, the director and the commissioner and the direct, the other director and try to put something together that, and, but every Alderman would have to get out there and hustle now and say, these are where my projects are and commit that money. And maybe we could talk E and A to having some extra meetings um, and get them over to the comptroller and you know implore her to we need to get this done because we're going into something that's very different than we ever did before. Right. So with that resolution, I, you know, a lot of them are, you know, would it be like binding? Is it something? Would it how, would it hold teeth? Even with an agreement, it's you know. Not it not not it would indicate our. Um, Intent. what our intentions are and i think enough of us will come back here that we uh the, if it's new people they won't know <laughs> i won't even say that they won't know but the, the any of us who come back here who've been around for a while we'll know how to make that into an ordinance then okay and <laughs> and even if i'm not here i'll help you do that <laughs> i'll come back and help whoever is there but the new people they'll still be looking for the restroom okay <laughs> understood <laughs> Unless we have a lot of people who used to be older people come back here, okay? So the, I think there are two former older people that are running. But short of those two, new people won't know a lot about how things run around here. You, As you know, it takes a minute to learn. Yes, it does. Uh, it's so, definitely a learning curve. That's why I'm encouraging a resolution with everybody just putting everything in there. This is what Ward 1, which is going to go into Ward whatever. Ward 1 is going to be in Ward 12. So you put the ward it currently in and what it's going to be and what the current alderman is and what there's, uh, they're wanting to encumber. That's why I'm looking at writing it, okay? Okay. All right. And I also want to be, <clears throat> I want to ask uh, Mr. Bradley one more question. Um, I just want to be clear, and I've, I've heard this multiple times. Sometimes it's uh, yes, sometimes it's a no. So I just want to be clear. War capital funds can be used on LRA property, correct? My understanding is, is that um, it, war capital funds can be used in the city right of way or on any city owned property um, that we have. They have been used on LRA properties in the past, but I believe there's an, a use agreement that has to happen with those in order for that to work. Um, I would tell you, Alderman, I really would need to get an opine on that from the city counselor, as I'm not 100% sure that's correct. Well, I actually okay. used to do, I want to tell you, I used to pay for LRA property sidewalks until they got so persnickety. I did it because it wasn't fair to people in the neighborhood that everything else was getting new sidewalk. And then we had this. And because LRA is not really, quote, unquote, the city, 
So it's really a state uh, uh, organized uh, organization, a corporation. So I just did it for years. I would just pay for it because it just wasn't fair. And it looked really bad when you had a big stretch of sidewalk and then you just had this piece of LRA property. So it can't, and, and we never had a problem with it, with the sidewalk. I can't speak to any other uh, improvements. So, uh, well, so what time, I wanted to, I appreciate that. Would be, sorry, that ahead. would be, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. That would be correct line. because the sidewalks are in the city right away. So absolutely, that could be used for that. My understanding, Alderman Bosley, what you were asking is, is if you could use them within the internal area of an LRA property, not within the city right away. And to me, that would take some type of a use agreement um, or an opinion from the city councilor. Okay. So, and, and the reason I ask is we have a, a few lots like there's a an instance of what you call like a pocket park right um and we got like a bunch of lra lots and there are a few that i think would be nice to have uh, as exercise equipment for the community like we just build like a small exercise garden we don't even need it to be really maintenance because it'd be you know we just do like a turf round but that would be for complete public use you know it's up to you to you know Go up there and do your thing. Don't hurt yourself. We don't want anybody to hurt themselves. But you know, it'd be like for public use. But you know, it's in between a few houses. It just makes the most. We're not in between a few houses. It's on the corner across the street from a park. And you, you know, you don't want to use the park space for it because it's a little small. But it'd be for public use, public health. Uh, you know, and I don't think it costs very much to do it, and it'd be aesthetically pleasing. So is it already a, a, a pocket park? You know, so they have some pocket parks that are, that are defined as parks and then you could do it for sure. But if it's just an informal pocket park, I think that the uh, uh, director is correct and that you have to have some kind of agreement with LRA. Okay. You, and they probably already have something in place for something like that. So you could check with them. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Well, yeah, those, those were my questions. Alderman Vicar, I you put your hand Oh, I'm sorry. Alderman McCarr, you had your hand up? Well, actually, yeah, I did, and I took it down. Um, I, I didn't know when we're coming to vote on stuff, only because I just a reminder at 1 o'clock. We're going to be voting to... soon. I just, that's, we're trying to wrap up these final things so we can pass these four bills. Oh, okay. And, and I think that was probably what I had my hand up for. I, I don't remember, actually. Okay. Alderman <laughs> Howard. Alderwoman Howard. <laughs> Alderwoman Howard, you have your hand up. I just, and this is really kind of, uh, I was wanting to know, has the qual I put it in the chat, has the quality of the paint change that is being used on the uh, streets they just striped uh, Morgan Ford last fall and the paint is almost gone already. And I was just wondering if something's changed. It's, it, I mean, it's, I, I've never seen anything like it before. I don't know if Kent or Bethany or Miss Williams can respond to that, who, who would be the person. And I've noticed they've striped some other areas and I mean, within weeks, it's just like, it's almost gone. So we have noticed some uh, changes in the quality of the paint uh, that we have used on the current bid that we have and, and contract. Um, and we are looking at different paints that we can purchase. I've asked Jamie to look into that um, with the hope that we can get something with a longer uh, durability and lifespan, as well as something with more reflect reflectivity um, in the paint as well. It's bad. I mean, it's bad at night. I mean, you know, down here by the firehouse, there people that aren't familiar, it is, it is bad down Christie and Kings Highway there. And they did recently stripe that, but I mean, I went by there the other day and it's like, and when in the rain, it's like, it doesn't even exist. It's so, it, it is really dangerous that, it, you know, people don't have a clue. So just, just so you know, I guess you noticed it too. So thank you. Okay, um, 
Uh, I see uh, Mr. Sweeney is here. Mr. Sweeney, it doesn't seem like that uh, the alderman from the 5th is going to hear board bill 80. So if that's the only thing you're here for, you're safe to leave because we're not going to hear it as an indicated. I just put it on the agenda in case he wanted to. So I'm sure you got some other things you need to do. All right. Okay. Um, he loves spending time with us. <laughs> he wants to come back and work for that little money. I know. <laughs> I Thank he, he, he wants to run for alderman. That's what he wants to do. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, alderman Bosley, you had your hand back up again. I do. I just I I got a um, message from one of the the workers here. What they what they expressed is. Um, that they they believe that if you drop the CDL requirement for becoming a utility worker because all of the workers aren't driving, then you probably would get a lot more applicants for utility workers. A lot of them don't utilize that CDL license that they have, and they're just working. Um, so that was that was what I wanted to add from the from one from, one, from our employees. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. okay. All right. Um, if we have no further questions, I, and uh, uh, Mr. Bradley, I know you have to leave. That's fine because we're getting ready to pass the board bill. You've answered all the questions. I appreciate you. Um, and, I, and so uh, we'll talk. Okay. All right. Have a good day. Um, okay. Um, Vice Chair, I need for you to take over so I can present board bill 141 to the committee. All and right. I also have an are. amendment. Okay, you recognize on um, board bill 141. As the clerk needs to read. Uh, board bill uh, number 141 introduced by Alderwoman Sharon Tyus, an ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service authorizing to the 2022 St. Louis Works and 5050 sidewalk programs citywide, providing for the construction and reconstruction of gutters, streets, driveways, spot curbs, sidewalks, alleys, traffic controls, beautification, tree planting, resurfacing, and, re and related engineering adjustments listed herein, appropriating $9.8 million. <laughs> 9 from the Street Improvement Fund containing sections for description of the work, approval of plans, and specifications work and material guarantees, estimated costs from city funds and supplemental agreements and reversion authorizations, applicable state and federal wage rate requirements, equal opportunity provisions, the mayor's executive orders, contract and advertising statutes and a public work emergency clause. All right, thank you. Mr. Vice Chair, I also have an amendment to Board Bill 141 that I'd like to bring before us. All right. Um, you're recognized to put your amendment before the committee. Okay. Uh, do we want to do a, uh, we want to have somebody uh, move to permit me to bring amendment to Board I Bill? I move that you bring amendment to uh, Board mm -hmm. Bill. What's the Board Bill? I'm sorry. 141. 141. Second. <laughs> uh, Madam Clerk, please call roll. Alderman Vicaro. Aye. Alderwoman Howard. Aye. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Aye. Alderwoman Evans. Aye. Alderwoman Schweitzer. Aye. Alderwoman Peel. Chair Tyus? Aye. Alderwoman Peel. We have seven aye votes. Thank you. By your motion, we have uh, put board bill, I'm sorry, we put amendment to board bill 141 in front of us. Okay. You may proceed. Um, and so, um, Mr. Vice Chair, uh, the amendment should have been in the Google Drive, and I think the, uh, Madam Clerk said it was, um, yeah. and specifically on the dis uh, description page, on line one, we're going to change the word uh, service authorizing 2022 to read 2021, 2022, and 2023. Um, and then line five, we're going to change 9,800,000 to read 15 million. And then line nine after emergency clause, 
we're going to insert this board bill has exhibit a attached indicating that the indicating three years 2021 2022 and 2023 of the st louis works a 50 50 sidewalk program and then when you go to page one on line one it it uh it includes 2021 and 2023 to, to 2022. So authorizing the 2021, 22, 23 St. Louis Works Program on page one of the bill. And then we're gonna delete out uh, the words 9 million, uh, the, the figure 9,800 on line five and insert instead 15 million. And then on line nine and also going to kicking it over to Line 10, it says this board has exhibit A attached indicating three years, 2021, 2022, and 2023 of the St. Louis Works and 5050 sidewalk program citywide. Then we go to, it's not, it's currently line 15 and 16. It will become something else because we're going to add another line, but currently on line 15 and 16, um, let's see, was it 15? was a that might be wrong okay yeah line 15 the last word says city for the 2022 st louis works that becomes 2021 2022 and 2023 but of course, that will not be line 15 and 16 because we added an, another uh, line, another line behind lines nine. So everything moves down. And then what is currently line 18, that um, we took, it says, uh, I'm sorry, line 17 and 18 says $9,800,000. And then it has in parentheses $9,800,000. That goes to uh, the writing of 15 million. And then in parenthesis, parenthesis, 15 million, the number. Okay. Does everybody uh, understand those uh, amendments? Do uh, we have any questions from committee members? All right, seeing none, sure. All right, uh, make a motion to adopt the amendment to board bill 141. I'll second that, and I'll call for previous roll. All right, it's been moved and seconded. And uh, is there any objection to previous roll? Hearing none, we've adopted to amendment to Board Bill 141. And now we will hear Board Bill 141 as amended. Okay. Um, Mr. Vice President, members of the board, Board Bill 141 as amended is the uh, ordinance for the, by the Board of Public Ser Service authorizing the years 2021, 22, and 23 to St. Louis Works and the 5050 Sidewalk Program. It is a budget that is attached in um, Drive also. If you click on the budget, you'll see all three years. We'll see the top page has everything um, um, for the whole three years, but then each individual tab shows you each of the years. Um, so it's broken out so that people will what know. What is your email address? Alderman? Can we meet yeah. Alderman Bacaro, please? Okay. Oh, I'm, so, I'm <laughs> sorry. What did okay. I do? No, sorry. Okay. I'm, set, okay. well, I'm setting up the two meetings at the same time now. Okay. I'm, I so, something. So that is uh, what we have before us. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this to get done. It's going to get done pretty fast because I intend to second read it and then suspend the rules on the floor and perfect it um, on Friday. So we will make sure we have it um, done by a sign and die. Um, and I'd ask for your favorable um, um, recommendation and your vote for board bill 141 as amended. All right. Do we have any questions from the committee members on board bill 141 as amended? Uh, could we get that in bank? All right, a request for board bill 141 to be in bank. Any objection? Second. Previous roll. All right. We have in bank board bill 141. Madam Clerk, please make note of that. So noted. Okay. All right. Uh, 
are there any questions or any speakers on board bill 141 that you have uh or do you have any speakers on the woman's side no i do not chairwoman all right so if we don't have any questions well, we had our speakers already they already talked about the bill so <laughs> there you go. Unless they have um, so, something else to add. No. Nobody. All right. I'll entertain a motion. Well, I will move to pass board bill 141 out with a due pass recommendation. As amended. Second. As amended. Right. Hold up. Hold up. I move that we pass board bill 141 out as amended. Actually, so she has to withdraw her second, right? So move second. All right. What's well, been moved and seconded? Uh, request for previous roll. Oh, well, <laughs> any objections? <laughs> All right, hearing none, board bill 141 out of board bill 141 as amended passes out of uh, the streets committee with a due pass recommendation. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now uh, we have uh, Alderwoman. Back. I'm going to take it back to the chair, and we have Alderwoman Davis here with us, and we were able to get. Did, did we ever get our second uh, amendment, uh, Madam Clerk? Yes, ma'am. All amendments are in the drive. Okay. Um, Alderwoman Davis, I did get your, uh, even though I couldn't, I didn't have time to respond to you. I did what you asked of me, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so um, the first board bill we have is 154, which is the board bill regarding the alleys. Could you read that? Um, board bill, I got you. Board bill number 154 introduced by Alderwoman Marlene Davis, an ordinance to protect the public health, safety, and welfare of city residents by restricting motor vehicle access to alleys as provided herein. In the Jeff Vanderloo, Gate District West, Tiffany, and Midtown neighborhoods, and those portions of the Botanical Heights and Shaw neighborhoods located within the boundaries of the 19th Ward as had been established in ordinance number 68981. Okay. Um, do you want someone to handle it in the committee since you're in your car because you don't have the amendments? I don't have the amendments. Uh, and I'm okay with, um, I can handle it. I'm okay. Okay, because okay, I just did what you asked. I just, I can tell them, you want me to tell them what the amendment says to insert insertions? Yes, ma'am, please, because I okay. am a little out of it. Okay, so. Um, just a minute, let me bring the amendments up. That's for board bill 156. And now we'll get the board bill 154. Are the amendments in with the board bills? Yes. Yes, they will be under the board bills and your amendment. Mine is not showing up. Mine is showing a later date and I've tried to update that on several occasions. Um, will you, can, do you have the amendment before you, Madam Clerk? Yes, ma'am. Can you read the amendment, please? Yes, ma'am. On the description page of the bill, delete on line one in the Jeff Vanderloo Gate District West, Tiffany and Midtown neighborhoods and those portions of the Botanical Heights and Shaw neighborhoods located within the boundaries of the 19th Ward as had established in ordinance number 68981. Insert on line one in the Jeff Vanderloo neighborhood from east from the east side of Leffingwell going west to South Spring and south side of Samuel Shepard going north on Martin Luther King. Gateway 
District West neighborhood from the north side of Lafayette to Park Avenue and the west side of Compton to Louisiana. Tiffany and Midtown neighborhoods from the west side of Grand Avenue to 39th Street and Lafayette North to Park Avenue. And those portions of Botanical Heights neighborhood from south side of Park Avenue to Lafayette and west side of 39th Street to east side of Lawrence Street and the Shaw neighborhoods located within the boundaries of the 19th Ward as had been established in ordinance number 89, I'm sorry, 68981. Page one of the bill, delete from line two after herein in the Jeff Vanderloo Gate, Dis Gate District West, Tif Tiffany and Midtown neighborhoods and those portions of Botanical Heights and Shaw, three neighborhoods located within the boundaries of the 19th Ward as had been established in in four, ordinance number 68981. Insert on line two after herein in the Jeff Vanderloo neighborhood from the east side of Leffingwell going west to Spring and the south side of Samuel Shepherd going north to Martin Luther King. Gateway District West neighborhood from the north side of Lafayette to Park Avenue and the west side of Compton to Louisiana. Tiffany and Midtown neighborhoods from the west side of Grand Avenue to 39th Street and Lafayette North to Park Avenue. And those portions of Botanical Heights neighborhood from south side of Park Avenue to Lafayette and west side of 39th Street to east side of Lawrence Street and the Shaw neighborhoods. Located in the boundaries of the 19th Ward it has been established in ordinance number 68981. Does that extent? That's the extent. Okay, uh, Alder Woman. Um, so that was board bill 154 with your amendments inserted in. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you are free to present and then we'll uh, bring the amendments before us. I just want them read so you wouldn't have to talk about what it was. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Madam uh, chair and members of the committee. I wanted to share with you that we've had a lot of complaints from our residents and I'm about uh, most especially our criminals using our alleys to uh, get away uh, once they committed crimes and most especially the easy access in and out. And so if there's only one way, we can probably uh, cut down on some of the opportunities that they have to commit crimes in garages and backyards and all of that. And so hopefully this will establish uh, some safety for our residents. Um, and that's the purpose of the bill. And um, I'd like to have a motion that we bring before us board, uh, the uh, amendment to board bill 154. So we'll I move, we, uh, second. Okay, previous roll. Previous roll. Any objections to previous roll? Okay, before us now is board bill 154, the amendment. Um, I'd like to move that we adopt the amendment. Second. Previous roll. Okay, any objection to previous roll? Okay, board bill 154 is amended. It's now before us. Alderwoman, you are free to, uh, is, are there any questions of the alderwoman? Hearing none, you're free to close. Uh, I ask for your favorable uh, consideration for this, and uh, I'm hoping that um, it passes with a due pass recommendation. Thank you. Okay, I, I'd entertain a motion that 154 as amended be passed out of streets with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Second. Previous problem. Madam Clerk, did you get any of that? I have three <laughs> made the motion, four seconded, and 27 asked for previous role. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and did we um did, oh we did we have you now did we ask for uh, previous role? Yes, who did that? Yes, 27. Okay. Any objections for previous role? Hearing none, 154 as amended is passed out of, with a due pass recommendation. Okay, 156 uh, is about speed humps, and I'm also, if you don't mind, um, Alderwoman going to have the clerk read the, uh, the, the amendment to that. And all right, thank you. Okay. First of all, read the original bill as it is, and then you'll read the amendment, please. Okay. The introduction. Oh, 
sorry. <laughs> Board bill number 156 introduced by Alderwoman Marlene Davis pursuant to ordinance number 70333 as amended by ordinance number 71394 an ordinance directing the director of streets to install speed humps and other street traffic calming installations to calm the flow of traffic on certain blocks in the 19th ward. All right. And if you guys don't mind, um, 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 Madam Clerk, would you read the uh, the uh, amendments, please? Uh, the on amendment. The, on the description page of the bill, insert on line three said neighborhoods to be in the Jeff Vanderloo neighborhood from the east side of Leffingwell going west to Spring Avenue and the south side of Samuel Shepard going north to Martin Luther King. They district west neighborhood from the north side of Lafayette to Park Avenue and the west side of Compton to Louisiana. Tiffany and Midtown neighborhoods from the west side of Grand to 39th and Lafayette North to Park Avenue. And those portions of Botanical Heights neighborhood from south side of Park Avenue to Lafayette and the west side of 39th Street to east side of Lawrence Street and the Shaw neighborhoods located within the boundaries of the 19th Ward as had been established in ordinance number 68981. Page one of the bill. Insert on line three, said neighborhoods to be in the Jeff Vanderloo neighborhood from east side of Leffingwell going west to Spring Avenue and the south side of Samuel Shepard going north to Martin Luther King. Gate District West neighborhood from the north side of Lafayette to Park Avenue and the west side of Compton to Louisiana. Tiffany and Midwest, Midtown neighborhoods from the west side of Grand Avenue to 39th and, th and Lafayette North to the park, to park Avenue. And those portions of the Botanical Heights neighborhood from the south side of Park Avenue to Lafayette and the west side of 39th Street to east side of Lawrence Street and the Shaw neighborhoods located within the boundaries of the 19th Ward it has, as had been established in ordinance number 68981. Insert on current line seven, in the Jeff Vanderloo neighborhood from east side of Leffingwell going west to Spring Avenue and the south side of Samuel, Samuel Shepard going north to Martin Luther King. Gate District West neighborhood from the south side of Lafayette to Park Avenue and the west side of Compton to Louisiana. Tiffany and Midtown neighborhoods from the west side of Grand Avenue to 39th Street and Lafayette North to Park Avenue. And those portions of the Botanical Heights neighborhood from south side of Park Avenue to Lafayette and the west side of 39th Street to east side of Lawrence Street and the Shaw neighborhoods located within the boundaries of the 19th Ward as has been established in ordinance number 68981. All right, Alderwoman, before we bring the amendment, uh, you are uh, other you are authorized to present Board Bill One Fifty Six before the Street Committee, a uh, recognized okay. rather. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, <clears throat> Board Bill One Fifty Six uh, has identified areas in uh, those neighborhoods that have uh, wanted and need speed humps. It is uh, one of those. <laughs> Well, you've had enough conversation about speed humps today. So everybody, <laughs> everybody understands the dilemma. Uh, and, and one of the things that I did include, uh, you will see, it, I didn't put my speed humps in areas that had high uh, industrial or commercial. They're indicated to be where uh, it's strictly residential. So that's why you see the circumferences are uh, so finite is because I don't want to um, interfere with those companies that have big tractor trailer trucks and all those kind of things coming through. But I want to make sure our residents have the ability to feel safer. Thank you. Okay, I'd entertain a motion to bring the amendment to Board Bill 156 before us. So moved. Second. Curious roll. Okay, any objection to previous roll? Any objection? Hearing none, board bill, the amendment to board bill 156 is before us. I'd entertain a motion to uh, adopt uh, uh, the amendment to board bill 156. So move. Second and previous, previous roll. roll. Any objections to previous roll? Hearing none, uh, board bill 156 is amended. Um, to become Bar Bill 156 as amended. Any questions of the Alderwoman? 
Hearing none, you're recognized to close. I thank you very much. Uh, I'll ask for favorable approval. And one of the things in the amendment, which probably uh, I probably shouldn't have, but I'm again trying to make sure that what is done is done appropriately to give safety to the residents. And I indicated in there that I'm requiring at least two speed humps on each block. Uh, so uh, I thank you very much for your consideration. Okay. I'd entertain a motion that we pass Board Bill 156 as amended. I would the do pass recommendation. So, so moved. Second. second. Previous roll. We have a motion, a second, a call for previous roll and objections to previous roll. Hearing none, Board Bill 156 as amended is passed out with the due pass recommendation. That's pretty good. Thank, Thank you so you much, Honorable much. Woman. We only left one bill in committee and that person had a chance to come and present it. <laughs> okay, well, that's pretty good. <laughs> we only left one bill. That is, you guys are a fantastic committee. Um, so I just want to have a little discussion about what we talked about because everybody is very anxious about making sure their money is spent. So my idea was to meet with... Uh, the, the two directors, BPS and street and with the trap uh, street commissioner and anybody else we need to, to try to write up some kind of a resolution indicating what each older person wants to happen because we don't know who will come back or not. And what we, if we can get our money and say we intend for this money to be uh, directed toward whatever projects and then put that in some kind of resolution and, and be able to pass it on sign and die, hopefully with unanimous consent if we get all the aldermen to, um, and to participate and then just pass it out. And then for those of us who come back, which I hope to be one, that uh, if uh, the new people decide that they're gonna try not to do it, I say we immediately have a board bill ready to pass to say, this is what should happen because this is a uh, monumental event that's going to happen um, in April. And we should put uh, safety uh, factors in place because there were a lot of things out of our control in the last few years. And I think the members of the Board of Aldermen have been very, very um, good in asking the right questions, but also being very patient. Um, there were a lot of things that were out of uh, the people who work for us hands. Uh, I, I started out with one idea about Ken Flakes. And what I really know now is that he's just, he has too much on his plate. And then for people to disappear and things like that, that is just too much. Um, and we have to find a way to get employees, but um, my way is not the only way. If so if some people have other ideas of what we can do, I would like to hear that because I do want to lock in the money. Hmm. Anybody? Anybody, anything better than a resolution maybe you think? No, I think, I think that's fine. I guess my question is, uh, will it have the impact if we could we couldn't do a bill on that? It's too late to introduce a bill. Okay, all right. But we can do a resolution. What I'm saying, those who come back, um, I think we prepare a bill, and if it, and we can introduce it the first thing, and then it can have law. Okay, because we can still have it prepared. We just okay. can't introduce it in this term. Okay. Okay. All the women swore. Schweitzer. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, like I said earlier, I appreciate that the ward capital bill that's in front of us now does have that if it's been allocated, it's not going back, it's not being treated as unencumbered as long as it's allocated. Right. Uh, so, uh, and then I think one of the things too is if, <clears throat> if you put money in an allocated fund, it does then have to go back through the board of ENA to move it out of that allocated fund into a different fund where now when we have unencumbered funds, we can just allocate them and it's not an act of ENA as long as the account already exists. Right. Okay. So there is some something already there for making it more difficult. It's not as easy as just, you can just do this and no one would know about it. Right. right. So okay. you don't think we need a, a resolution or not? I don't know. I guess it really, because in, in the past when we have new aldermen come in, when you know 14 of the, or half of the wards are up for election, you know, a number of new older people are always going to be coming in. And I guess it's possible that people would come in and say, you know, in, in the 13th ward, somebody else came in, for example, and say, no, we're not going to spend any money on King's Highway traffic calming. 
it all out. Um, I don't want that to happen because the project has been stalled <laughs> for needs to go forward. Um, but it wouldn't be if I had come back to the board, that's not my ward anymore. So uh, well, that's why you would say, this is what my, and I'm encumbering this, it's currently the, the, you're the 13th ward. It will become, you already know what the ward is going to be, but I'm encumbering it for the current or what ward number or whatever it is, because it's going to be part of whatever ward, right? I think the one place where it's sort of difficult is when it's like something like 50-50 sidewalk, where there's uh, you know hundred a few hundred thousand dollars of 13th board board capital and uh, in the in the sidewalk 50-50 um, sidewalk pot now if you will, um, and that would be between the first ward, second ward, third ward would I all see. represent. <clears throat> Part of the thirteenth ward's ward capital funds. So, do you would you then look at maybe saying we proportionally give one third to this, one third to that? Uh, it, I mean, <laughs> it's your decision. You don't have to do it. It's just a way to for us to indicate what we wanted to happen. In the best worlds, we would have gotten this done. Okay, so you can think about it. Yeah, it's an interesting conversation. Right, Alderman woman from the fourteenth. Um, you know, I think we, a resolution stating that, you know, anything that is in the works needs to stay in the works, because the other thing to consider is that the ward capital fund funding will only be split 14 ways now rather than 28. So it should double the amount that people get. Is that, is my math off there or not? But I think that if we just put the brakes on and whatever's there, and allocated needs to stay there and it's untouchable because I think it's it's too confusing once you start jumbling this up and people, you know, and then, you know, you, you, you get the taxpayers all up in a, you know, and they've been waiting long enough for this stuff. So much of this stuff has been deferred. And then, you know, you're gonna have people that you served before and then people that are new, and it's just, it's like, they're gonna ask you what happened to it. So I think probably the wise thing to do was just leave things as they are, start with a fresh slate with the new 14 and they'll they'll get double the money. So, I mean, to me, problem solved. Okay, but we're still talking about what's already there. I'm not talking about the new money. I'm talking about what, we already have some money encumbered. Do we want to say this is where this money or uh, should be? It needs to stay one? there. Yes, uh, right. That's and that's what I'm saying. If you have a list do. saying, I'm hey, sorry, these we are my can't do an ordinance as such, but I think a resolution and and you know maybe making uh, the uh, BPS people aware of it, and hopefully things will stay unless they see that something is such folly. I don't know. I mean, I. I don't, I, you can only spend it on so many things and they're usually tax, you know, serve the taxpayers. So well, you can do the resolution and you can have a board bill prepared. So when you come back in April, that yeah. will be the first things that you introduce. All right. think, and then Rich Bradley did state that, uh, Madam Chair, uh, he kept saying, and even when Alderman Page and Bosley and I met with him with that Ward Capital Subcommittee, he said that, if you have projects and you have already had the money moved and allocated, they can't, they're not going to, nobody can come in and stop that. He said, that's already done. And so, so I'm going to disagree with him a little bit and say, when new people come in, they can get it changed. That's why I'm pushing it. Okay. okay. It's just the same way as we change our ordinance that has been passed. Okay. We amend it. So okay. the more to me that we make a list and say what our intentions are for, I'm not talking about new money. I'm talking about the money that we have. Then we, um, um, and there's a list. So then people can't say anything was, uh, oh, that wasn't really what it was. Now you might come up where some alderman is doing all their family or something. And maybe somebody would say, well, that's not right. But other than that, I think that we should have the people that are in office be able to encumber the money that we have now. And I'm not talking about future money. Right. From the 23rd. So, I mean, yeah, the resolution can easily state, we just passed the board bill. Or no, we didn't pass. If you want to do something really risky, we could actually redo the board bill we did yesterday. Uh, we perfected one that said, 
the money equally goes to the wards, period. And, the, you know, because it was amended, I guess we could redo that when it's risky because you could perfect it tomorrow, which means it wouldn't get passed until signing die. Or you can just do a resolution like you said in the resolution say in the spirit of that board bill that the money also be equally divided. Because we, we did pass that, yet. we didn't pass it yet. We We're perfected. on our way to passing it, how about that? Right, we perfected it yesterday. Okay. Just throwing them thoughts out there. Um, so, and if you have 50-50 sidewalk programs, if you already have a list, that can be attached to the resolution too. So there are ways um, to get as, uh, as much as possible. You're not gonna get everything. There's always gonna be, cause this is just very different. This is not one or two people um, or three people that came in new. We, we got a whole different thing. Even the people that's been here, you still, it's very different because you come back representing um, uh, a ward that's twice or three times the size. Uh, many of us in North St. Louis will have wards that's three times the size of what we're uh, used to. Uh, Alderman from the 19th, did you have anything you wanted to, to, to say about this? No, I think you all are on the right track. And I think it's important that any way you can, you have to reiterate right? because we saw what the original thought was. Thank you. Right, right. Alderman Carl, you still have your hand up. Are you finished or um, did you have anything else to say? No, just too stupid to put my hand down, I guess. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm on two computers. Don't call my point. friend stupid. I don't like you calling my friend stupid. <laughs> well, I would call him myself. <laughs> That's, you're still my friend, so don't do that. <laughs> I, I will say I was not paying good enough attention, but no. That, All that right, that's fine. a better way. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to draw up a resolution that in the next couple of weeks, I'll get to you guys and just indicating just like what it would be. And everybody think about it. Nobody has to participate if you don't want to, but if you want to, that's a way to indicate uh, to everyone what you want it to be done. Um, since some of this was out of our hands. And that was just this my is, thought. This is like a last will and testament for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do want to say I appreciate that. And I think that it needs to be done, you know, because it is going to be really different. And even if you have part of your ward and part of other people's wards, you're going to come in and there's going to be things that people are expecting to be done. And if they don't get done, it's right. not going to be pretty for that person. So exactly. And they'll say you're taking it and my other older person mm -hmm. uh, wanted it to be X, Y, Z. So that's why I want to memorialize it so that it comes from the, uh, the current elected older person. And if something gets changed, you will at least have tried to leave it in the best hands it could be. Right. I agree. Thank you so much for taking uh, taking the time and getting this together. And I'll I'll be looking for it. then. if you need right. input, let me know. I will. OK, thank you. Anything else? Well, yeah, I, I kind of do got just one thing. It's not okay. necessarily germane to what we've been speaking about, but I do have two, uh, well, everybody's important, but you all are knowledgeable, um, you and all the woman Davis on how I could particularly get this done. This is a part of our business. Um, unfortunately, uh, I have board bill 147 that went to hoods in my ignorance. I thought it went to streets um, and really didn't get a chance to really revisit it. I got an email and they're like, hey, are you still pushing that bill? Uh, we were trying to turn the third ward uh, boundaries into also a vending district where folks can have food trucks because the uh, food trucks are pretty limited in the city. Uh, so with that. Is it stuck in HUDs? It, yeah, it's HUDs. in HUDs right now. Uh, well, but you but can, I, I never asked all the women Davis for a hearing. Right, but you can ask to pull it out on the floor and perfect it tomorrow. Wait a minute, how long? We don't know. How, when did it get sent there? It's, it's been there been. since, uh, let's see, it was... It's been more than 30 days. 12, uh, December the 9th. And if I were you before, I would talk to the older woman privately because it's in her committee and not just, you know, uh, do a hostile take out. Oh, taking out is a hostile thing. Oh, I'm okay well, that's, with that's it. I'm, that's I'm okay. Have a conversation. Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm okay. You know, yeah. She said she was okay. Okay. And, and, and the thing is, I'm okay with it. She, she, she would have to have a committee hearing so 
somehow before the meeting tomorrow to, to she no she said she was okay with it taking it out i'm fine okay so i know how busy people get and you just had a misstep because right. i know i had sent everybody emails i think two or three times right refer to the bill getting on the agenda yeah so i'm fine with it right well, so I then appreciate it. That's happen, definitely on me. it would be second red friday and then you could try to suspend the rules and perfect it so it would be passed on a uh, sign die. Right. Okay. Right. You'd have to do two, pull it out of committee, second read, perfect to all tomorrow. Okay. Which is well, all within our rules. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. That's why I asked you all. I appreciate you three. <laughs> I, you know, you know, okay. definitely our wealth of information. Thank you all. Okay. A anything else? I really want to thank you. I think that the street committee is a fabulous committee. I appreciate the work and our work. You guys show up, you come to things. I'm fortunate to uh, have been the chair of the committee. I hope and expect to come back here. But if I don't, I want to thank each of you all for the commitment you show to being on the board of aldermen and to the attention to detail and questions on the street committee. And I'm very fortunate to uh, represent the best committee don't listen to this older woman from the 19th. I, I, I am the chair of the best. And you too, older woman from the 27th, and, and, and older woman from the 14th, and alderman from the 3rd, and alderman from the 23rd. All you chairs, I'm sorry that the street committee is the best of everything, but I appreciate it. I, I, I don't I, Should we take a vote on this? Right. No. I, I, no, I, 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 wait a minute. I'm the queen, okay? <laughs> And this is the best committee. Look at all these chairs I got on my committee, okay? I know. <laughs> so I just really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thank you for the lessons we learned. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we definitely appreciate it. Appreciate the experience with all of you all. Yeah. Thank all you. All right. Okay, so I didn't entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Recess all in favor? <laughs> all in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. See you guys Friday. Oh, I'll see. Aye. I'll be at public safety in a few minutes. Okay. Yes, we will. Yeah, <laughs>